I'll treat that as a separate trade. But it's a double bottom from yesterday's lows, and I want to respect it. Um, let's see what happens. I mean, you're going to learn every single day the market wants to teach you something, and that's what we're here for. But we dedicate the middle of the day specifically to that, and that's why I call, I, I think the professor is Captain Protein when he eats 27 million eggs a day, but apparently he's not, so I learned this morning something new that I learned. Well, well. I just made that up on the fly. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So it wasn't The story a... was last week, but I made the, the, the Captain okay. Protein thing was, was brand new. It just caught me off guard. It's all about content. But Sharif and Adara, go get them. It is learn to trade. Which I had to think of. Had to think about. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to Learn or How to Trade, uh, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif. And we're going to wait on everybody to come on over from the other stream. Yesterday took a little bit of time, so let's pack our patience today. And we're gonna be talking about patience today, let me tell you, in the lesson. We already have Big Kyle Burdett in the chat. What's up, my man? Let's get it, yes, sir. We got Sebastian, we got Pillsbury, we got OG Darwin. We even have the world's greatest moderator. That's you, Bears versus Bulls. Chase Bands in the house as well. Big Bob W, what's going on, my man? Nice to have you with us. Again, we got Pillsbury saying thank you to Adara. Um, let's see if everybody else here will join shortly. Sometimes it just takes a little bit for the uh, algorithm to help everybody come on over. We got Dan, the man, Emmons. We got Peter Panda, Jacko, Andrew Chow, Pitchbull, Mr. Long Shorts. Okay. Six to V. Ace Ventura, what is up, my man? We got Timone, Ronaldo, Hell's Gate. Okay, sounds a little daunting, but it's all good there. We got Derek B, Adrian, Chef Joe, James Dell, Vin, Britt, Brendan, and Solo Cristo. Welcome to everybody, guys. Love that you guys have been able to join us today. We are continuing with the topic de week. I don't know how oh, to say it. week, I like the that. week. Sure. And uh, we're talking about Simon. range trading. Yeah. yeah. So, man. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about psychology today. But before we do, let's check with Adara. Anything you're looking at? Anything you like at the moment? Yeah, so I um, we I did, unfortunately, spill some tea in the back. I was just saying to stream. So I have no tea and also no trades on watch with regards to that. Thank you to, to Brian Coles and Mario in the back for helping clean that up. Much appreciated. Uh, but right now, we're, we're trying to clean up some trades. and, and clean. You know, but I, I don't really have anything on watch here. Um, NVIDIA, a little rangy here for me on the one minute. But it's also NVIDIA. So, like, we're going to be very cautious. We're going to exercise lots of caution. Shout out to Sean for killing that trade today. But I want to take everything... Make sure, make sure I'm understanding what I want to do. I feel like yesterday went pretty well for me trade-wise, so um, trying, to, trying to be a little bit patient and, and make sure that we can hopefully replicate that success, which is really great because we're talking about trade psychology right now. Also, in the words of Pillsbury in the chat, let's get that dough. And yes, I love that pun. <laughs> so now it's time for range trading psychology. That was perfect. I mean, if you were looking for a pun, that was just... Woohoo! Pillsbury dough boy, nobody got that? Yeah. Uh, it was wonderful, says the Katina man. All right, guys, range trading. It can be a mentally demanding discipline. Unlike trending markets with constant action, ranges often experience periods of inactivity. Today, we'll explore strategies to navigate these calm waters, so to speak, and develop a winning mindset. Let's get right to it. So the challenge of range trading psychology, that is the first topic here. So range trading requires, let's put it bluntly, patience and discipline. The frequent inactivity can lead to things like boredom, right? The lack of consistent excitement might tempt you to chase unnecessary trades, right? Uh, you know, you're trying to range trade, let's say that level yesterday, I, I don't know, what was I range trading? Microsoft yesterday, 421, 420, while other things were making moves, distracts me from the actual trade at hand. And the FOMO, the fear of missing out, no question about it. When, you're, when you hear the Katina man, $679 in the money, and you're you know, 15 trying to trade this, uh, this range, there is definitely that element of FOMO Right, that can seep in. So seeing other others profit in trending markets can make you question your range trading strategy. That is, you know, if you don't have that conviction behind it. And over trading, it can lead to some over uh, some patterns of over trading. The urge to make something happen, uh, so to speak, can lead to impulsive trades that are outside your plan. And you know, anybody who's been trading successfully for a while knows that sticking to the plan is kind of part and parcel of the game here and how you stay afloat. 
So what are some strategies uh, that we could help, uh, you know, help compose ourselves as traders? So the first thing is obviously to embrace the patience, accept the fact that range trading involves waiting for the right opportunities and try to focus on the discipline and following your trading plan. Consider using things like a checklist, for example, to ensure that you're sticking to your strategy. You often hear me uh, talk about my small cap gapper requirements. It's gotta be, have a definable pre-market high, check. It's gotta be above the pre-market high, check. And then it's gotta be trading above the volume weighted average price, check. A rudimentary list, albeit, but one that I can kind of stick to and help follow my plan. So embrace the patience and adopt a trading plan and stay engaged, guys, right? Develop a routine for, to help you monitor the market during active trading hours, but avoid constant screen time. Pursue other interests during these calmer periods, especially if you are just working within a range. It's a more stable trade. It's not breaking up or breaking down aggressively and you know your stop might get blown through. If that is the kind of trade that you're engaged in, you may wanna get away from the screen so that you're not seeing and you're not having to change your mind. The Katina man, the Neil, they often take time off. You know the Katina man does his walk and talk. He puts stops in place when he's in a position. Neil, the same thing, okay? Focus on the process. Instead of fixating on immediate profits or the desire for immediate profits, Concentrate on executing your trading plan flawlessly. Uh, celebrate well-executed trades, pat on the back, even if the gains are small, right? It's about the process, I guess, for some people, rather than the actual dollars and cents. And so try to focus on that. And practice uh, a degree of gratitude. This, um, this is one that I really tried to espouse earlier in my trading career because one of the people that I was following said always, you know, be be happy with what you're, what, what you're gaining uh, and try not to always look at it, oh, I left money on the table, I left money on the table. So practice gratitude, appreciate the low volatility and the controlled risk environment that range trading offers. So keep that in mind and know your levels. Thank you for adding this, Adara. Know your levels. If there is a stock with a range you like, make sure you have your eyes on the chart so you're aware when it falls in your area of interest. Once the range looks ready to go, confirm your suspicions um, before getting involved in the trade. Okay, so hold on for a second. The Katina man now is short NVIDIA at triple eights. Um, it's now breaking down below uh, 887. It's an 886 uh, territory, so keep your eye on that trade using the More Trader TV channel and short Tesla at the same time. The Katina Man is short Tesla. What's the price on? 170? Uh, 170. 170.25, the Katina Man is short Tesla. Short Nvidia, triple eights, and short Nvidia Tesla, 168. Triple eights with an 88, no way. You gotta buy a lottery ticket. Uh, no, he's, uh, he's uh, short 888.88. On purpose, baby, Spit. hit it, baby. All right, so. Keep your eye on uh, what we have there on the right side of the screen, the markets dashboard, watch live on More, to Tra More Trader TV. You'll be able to see Neil and Sean's positions as well as their entries and their exits. All right, so we're talking about building a winning mindset. So it's a bit of a tougher thing to range trade for some people, especially if you're more adept at the uh, breakout range, or sorry, um, momentum trades. So here's how to kind of get your mind around uh, range trading. Develop a realistic trading plan. So set realistic profit targets and risk parameters that align with your risk tolerance and your trading style. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and deviate a little bit from here. The range trade, uh, by definition, should be giving you a look at what your entries and what your exits should be. So yesterday, if I was when I was range trading Microsoft, 420 was the entry or thereabouts, it's a $400 name, so it's not gonna be 420 on the dot, right, 419 and change, 420 and change. The whole point was that 420 level was a rinse and repeat. The 421 was also a rinse and repeat until it broke above that level and then it came right back down to 420 again. So by definition, the range trade should be showing you your entries and showing you your exits. Doesn't matter if you're going short at 421 and covering at 420 or going long at 420 and covering at 421. The identifiable range was there, okay? and focus on consistency. Small, 
consistent gains add up over time. Aim for consistent execution rather than hitting home runs with every single trade. Hey, man, you know, if you can hit home runs every time, have at it. But the odds are that you will likely not. And journaling, super important here. Uh, track your trades, uh, including emotions, to identify patterns and areas uh, for improvement. And visualization, did you add this visualization? I did. I didn't have it in here, okay. Visualiz I, thought, I thought visualization was there and then I added part of it. Oh, interesting, maybe I didn't put it in. Visualization, uh, visualize yourself making the successful trade within the range, reinforcing uh, those positive behaviors. And consider drawing the range on the chart using crooked lines. Uh, <laughs> Come on, you know I had to come in I there with did. that, right? That <laughs> Placing good. lines at support and resistance levels, right? So you can literally witness the trade coming to your levels and visualizing the range. And this is uh, from Adara, and she loves to range trade, so take her word for it there. She puts in the lines, she wants to see the price manifest up or down into those key levels of uh, support and resistance that she's earmarked. And I guess that has some sort of, you know, good feeling that you get yeah, it's from that? Like well, for me, it's like when you see it come in, you're like, oh, this is the plan. Now you just have to execute the plan. I think it helps me have the, the gumption to execute the plan when I actually physically see what I want. You think you're just going to drop gumption like that? Come on. <laughs> and remember, guys, developing a winning psychology takes time and practice, so pack your patience. And here's a little, uh, here are a couple of bonus tips here. Engage with a supportive trading community. You've already found one if you're here. You have people in the chat. You have the, the Neil, the Katina man, myself, Dara, Brendo, and even uh, the production team who chimes in every now and again on uh, the chat. Those guys, the Katina man doesn't know about those guys, but yeah, shout out to uh, the Chilean Nightmare doing his things today on the ones and twos. Look at Brendo at work, eh? Look at him, he's all focused and stuff. All right, get I it, Brendo. He was there. Get it, Brendo. Um, and also, share your experiences and challenges with like-minded individuals. That can help boost your motivation and, uh, and keep you on track. I know for a fact that every time I venture back into the kitchen, there's a whole body of traders there, and they're not just talking trash. They're actually talking about their trades. They're giving each other little tips and hints and things that they can improve on. The Katina man drops back in there. He's talking to them. Neil's dropping back in there. He's talking to them. We're engaging. We're exchanging ideas all the time, and that's how you'll learn about yourself. So find yourself a good community. If it's not on here, look for something else, and, uh, yeah, kill it on that. And that's basically all I have to say about that, Adair. Yeah, no, I think that's a, thank you for going over that lesson. This is a lesson I obviously am really passionate about, and I say obviously because someone likes ranges, and I'm that someone. So, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, I am actually in a couple trades that I like for range reasons right now. So it's funny, right before Sean says he's short Tesla, I was interested in this Tesla because um, look at this little range here. Bottom, 169.40, top. 17012. I mentioned this last, uh, not last week, probably one of these earlier days in range lessons. If we're in a range and we're kind of going back and forth, but we have a clear direction on the day, I'm probably going to take the trade only or mostly in the direction that we're on, we are on the day. So because we're below VWAP, we're down about 1%, I'm going to be taking Tesla exclusively to the downside Down. on this range. We will not be taking it to the upside. So I, I wanted to watch this balance of the range, but I didn't want to take the long because I wasn't as confident in that. I think we're getting a little bit uh, wedgier, for lack of a better term. I have a, another, I, I kind of kept this position small because I wanted to add if we get to 179.09s, or sorry, 170.09s. I'm not sure we will, but if we do, there is a beak wetter in order and it's ready to go. And then I do have a buy order, it looks like here set. Um, I'm gonna have to cancel that. But, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be just kind of keeping my eye on this, ready to add and take out from this position. Scalp, chop and churn, what have you. We also have a spy short. Shout out to, to Kyle Burdett for mentioning this one. It's funny, he mentions this in the chat. I just pulled it up a little bit earlier. So I like this VWA projection. I um, played it short a little bit for that mini range, but took way too small of size. But right now, we're gonna be getting some of this out as we start to drop below here with, of course, the, the main goal here being to get out as we get into that 5.15.30s. So just trying to piece out this position as we do, combining my love of range and my love of scalping to have this fun little scalpulation trade on the SPY. So that's mainly what I'm looking at right now. I would like, we did not, we only got part filled on that, so it's a little unfortunate. SPY, if you want to, come just to skosh lower. There we go. My spidey sense is tingling. <laughs> and I think we have a little bit more oomph in this range trade. And this one, I, I'm okay taking either direction because I have such a clear resistance level of this um, 
this VWAP. I am cognizant too, like I said, with my ETFs. I don't like to rely too much on the chart, but what I'm doing is looking at the chart, checking the book to make sure the levels are good. I'm trying to get involved. How are you doing? Good. Keeping an eye on some of these small cap gappers over here. Keeping an eye on this rent trade. This was an interesting one today. Very aggressive, multiple halter. Let's flip to the one minute over here. Yeah, this one halted initially at 9.30 right off the bell. It's been one, two, three up halts, no down halts. Hasn't made its way down to the volume weighted average price since basically it opened. So I haven't had a base, a, a really good entry. I was looking at this 18 and a half, and then I said to myself, okay, so it seems to be like the bottom end of the range, not the top end uh, as a resistance level. So I didn't, I wasn't inclined to take it. And also the we had a bit of a crossover here on the moving averages, which kind of made me feel, you know, we may be trending down a little bit. But looks like the moving averages are starting to point back up. So we'll keep eyes on RENT. The other one from yesterday, ADIL, kind of got going a little bit yesterday uh, in the pre-market, died uh, below VWAP for the majority of the day, had a resurgence for whatever reason in the aftermarket at four o'clock, and uh, we rejected off that aftermarket high. So technically, 308, and that takes us into that key resistance level from yesterday. But right now, it's trading below the volume weighted average price, so I won't be able to trade this one. Uh, uh, that is until it makes its way back above that. MNDR, another small cap gapper doing things here, 53% of the good, well above the volume weighted average price. This one was the IPO from yesterday. Shout out to the individual, I forget their name, who uh, showed me this bad boy yesterday, MNDR, a new IPO that we got yesterday, goes by the name Mobile Health Network Solutions. I still don't have information on it with respect to float or anything uh, other than basically the market cap and how much volume it's done. It's done about 3 million, 3.1 million shares of the day. It is trading at highs right now, just below 10 and a half, 1040 HOD on MNDR. And then the last but not least, E-L-Y-M, another small cap gapper. This one really just flew up there at 7 a.m. and then it's been very wide range per candle. It's currently below the volume weighted average price, but it's hugging it, right? So VWAP's at 422, it's trading at 411 or 413 or whatever right now. So awfully close to the volume weighted average price. No entry on any of these names quite yet, but keeping them on my radar, Adara, we'll see what we get the rest of the day. Yeah, I mean, we got a whole day ahead of us. We are only 17 minutes into today's um, how to trade, so there will be more trades and more how to do them. So there we go. Uh, we added into the, or we're trying to get added into the spot. There we go. We got added to the spy here. So the reason I stayed after that big pushback up, we had that big pushback up, and then just as quickly we sold back off. So I like that we rejected a little bit of that earlier base. I am, again, if we kind of come back into this area with a little more oomph, a little bit more gas in the tank, then I shall be exiting post haste speaking of gas in tanks or i guess not speaking of gas in tanks we're talking about tesla we did get out of tesla and that was because for me the tesla move had a little more oomph in it than the spy move did uh, so as you could see here we have that big big push up in tesla and we don't really give it up also my area for um for tesla as well was going to be what we did here at that earlier the top of that pre-market range right which happened to come into confluence with vwap that's always nice when that happens so that happens and i get out if we keep rejecting this uh go, go confluence if we keep rejecting this i may get back in the short but right now i don't want to also um fake spy saying that that uh sorry not spy kyle saying that's spy action right there is a prime short-term counter trend entry so that's um yeah that I'm happy to, happy to hear that it worked out well. Um, yeah, and shout out to Kyle Burdett because honestly, I've been able to kind of pay more attention to to like these areas of, of entry on the SPY just based on movement. Um, kind of thanks to, again, a lot of the advice in the chat, which goes back to uh, and a lot of that from Kyle as well with those short-term SPY entries, right? And again, this goes back to what we were saying in the lesson of the day, just like, hey, make sure you have your eye um, on this a really supportive community that can kind of Yep. Give your advice, share their insights, share their wisdom, because that's what it's all about here. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and I think how to trade especially is great because we have people who are still learning. I'm still learning. Um, and so we're all kind of able to learn together, which I think is really key and very cool. So here we are in the SPY, staying below VWAP. So I am pleased as punch. NVIDIA getting a skosh arrangey here. So let's, let's see what we're doing um, on this. Yeah, so I do like, let me switch to the one minute because I do like, I like looking for general trends on the five and the three with NVIDIA, but I like to trade it off the one. I do still like this short here off that. Uh, well, Sean, go to 888.88. So we are not that fortunate, but I think <laughs> this 888 plus area down into 886 
50-esque could be an area I'm looking at. Right now, though, all eyes, or at least all my eyes, are on the SPY. Also, there's Apple. I was going to say Apple's a fun Yeah, one, I'm looking just at holding that $1 area. If it, I'm going to give it super tight, um, super tight room over here. Let me just put in my stop. There we go. Now we'll see if we can hold up at 169 grade. If we can't, I'm gonna give it a couple of pennies worth of room. It's that whole dollar look that I'm looking to hold up at here. I also happen to like your Tesla look there. And let me tell you why, because it came into the volume weighted average price. And I wanna see what it's gonna do there. Is it gonna reject VWAP and come right back down? VWAP on my chart for Tesla is one, um, 170 60 or thereabouts, so 170.60, not a bad look. It did wick in to VWAP and then wick right back down. But here comes another five minute candle that's green. So three five minute candles now that are green. Let's see if this respects VWAP and by this, I'm talking about Tesla or we get that wick shimmy dance rejecting VWAP from the, uh, from the south side. So that's what I'll be looking there uh, for Tesla. Let's see if Tesla is in any area other than VWAP over here. So Tesla's closing print yesterday, 170, 175 or thereabouts, uh, like 171 and three quarters essentially. Um, let's see, now it is breaking decidedly here above VWAP, but not on a closing basis quite yet. I, okay, you know what? If it doesn't respect VWAP here, I will be looking for a short on Tesla at 171 and three quarters. That is the bottom end of the consolidative range in the pre, and it is also yesterday's closing price. So if it comes into that level, I guess we'll decide what we'll do with Tesla, but right now it's not rejecting off the volume weighted average price. All right, Apple pumping up nicely here. Time to take some uh, P and, uh, profits on this one. Let's see if this one can pump into the high a day. Uh, the high a day being that 169.43 on AAPL. Richardson, 599 euro. Super chat, what is uh, the word for uh, like the cents or pence in, in euros? Euro cents, Katina Man? Yeah, the Katina Man says Euro cents. Okay. That makes Euro cents. <laughs> I love it. Adara on fire. What's up, Sharif, Adara, and everyone else? Hope everyone's trading day is running green so far. Keep on learning and harvesting those gains. Thank you very much, my friend. Well said. Kind words from you. Uh, I hope you kill it as well. Shout out to our friend Richardson there on uh, the other side of the screen. Yeah, across the pond as well, I guess. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. I guess that's England. Pond, yeah. yeah. Well, it's all of Europe. They're oh, that's true. Okay, pond, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Um, so we got that pop up in the spy. So I had to say bye bye to the spy. No longer spying the spy. We are a little bit down in the story, but I am pretty happy with my risk management. I didn't get out right when we had that pop. We took some profits, and it was like, Adara, you're, you know, you're Icarus. You're flying a little bit too close to the sun. Maybe um, get away from the sun. I and love go, it. That's go funny. get some, go hang out inside for a little bit. So uh, thank you, B. Davis, saying I'm always on fire. Much appreciated. Just trying to to bring um, those puns and, and having a good time. This is actually pretty funny to Eric Henderson, Hendrickson saying, spy going up wants to eat a dare stop loss. Yes, it did it. With Pac-Man ate my stop loss. So <laughs> I enjoyed that one there. I thought, um, I'm surprised you didn't say Pac-Woman. Because pa usually you're always woman. feminizing all this stuff, like oh, Lily. Oh, that's true, like Miss Lily. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. So I'm surprised I didn't say Pac Woman either. Yeah. But uh, but right now, the only thing we have packed in this market is a punch to the upside. Uh, we're going long here. Uh, um, well, I'm not going long here, but the market is. And this is one thing, too, I want to say about patience and what I'm trying to work on. Is so I don't want to jump into trades all willy-nilly, which is also why I had to get out of the spy. I was like, I think we're curling up here. It's because I do see myself as a range trader. And that means, and I do think I, I have the most success when I'm range trading. So yesterday, I had one of my best days in a while, and I was really proud of what I did there in the sim yesterday with uh, NVIDIA. And I, that was just me taking it off of the same level all day in either direction, right? All so day, that's day. the type of trading I want to do, looking for these ranges, looking for these key levels, and playing them accordingly. I liked initially what we're doing in Tesla, but we gave it up, so I had to look elsewhere. And right now, it's hard, as Sharif was kind of saying there in the lesson of the day, we have to be really patient with ranges. Now, I'm not as patient when I'm in trades, but I, I am trying to work as well on getting patient when entering them, right? Because you want to make sure that you're not getting into any range all willy-nilly. You want to make sure you have a range you like. And I find when I get involved in non-range trades, just because I'm kind of looking for something to do, that's when things get dicey for me. So I'm going to be focusing on seeing any ranges in this market. Okay. Right now, there's not too much on my horizon. I do think right now, though, with the SPY potentially curling up a little bit, 
I'm considering getting back into this on a long basis, but I have no clear read right now. That's why I'm just trying to breathe, take a step back. Okay. Um, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things, Adair, if that's cool. Um, Amir Barak mentioning a new IPO. I think Amir was the one that told me about MNDR yesterday. Correct me if I'm wrong, Amir, but here's a new one, Chilean Nightmare. P A C S Pax Group Incorporated trading trading on the Nizi. This bad boy just got live here at exactly 11:08 a.m. It's been live for less than 20 minutes. Uh, the range, look, it's tight. It's 2260 low, 2345 HOD. Uh, let me just pull this up on here. One second, PACS. Just need to make sure that this thing is updating live. There we go. Okay, so the volume, 2.6 million, uh, million shares done so far, trading at 2335. I have no information about this company quite yet. Again, like much like MNDR, no float information, no, um, no nothing, nothing about the company details or anything like that. If you guys are wondering what this thing is on the side, that's a volume profile. I'm going to be using the volume profile on this specific chart. So anytime I want to see volume profile, it's going to be something like this. So I, I hope you guys are are able to get used to that. I know it's a little a little whack there on the side, but that's the way it is. PACS, and then Elon as well telling me about Oracle. Oracle pumping up here, says E-L-O-N, not the uh, Elon Musk, but our Elon, um, O-R-C-L. Let's have a look at what Oracle is up to on the day. Good look here for Oracle. Let's flip off the one minute. Not flip off the one, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> uh, let's flip to the one minute. Uh, I guess this is the, uh, the earnings day for Oracle. Back on March 11th, we pumped up quite nicely. Uh, there now a little bit of a retracement um, on the hourly with that 121 and a half essentially as um, as that local low. We're at 123.09 HOD on the day, but it's still a bit of a downtrend. If uh, you know at least a local downtrend with lower highs and lower lows, Elon. But I got to tell you, on the day it looks absolutely fabulous. Let's flip to the five minute here on Oracle. It's been holding the 10 period exponential moving average like a dang glove, all right? And when it's dipped, it's only wick dipped below the uh, 10 EMA. The 10 EMA is the solid green line on this chart. It's been holding that. So if you, I guess, if the trade here is to maybe try to get a, a little bit of a dip trade off uh, retracement. One, two, three, four, five, six green candles in a row, and then the, the red candle ends up being a hammer candle, which shows you that there's buyer exuberance there. So Oracle having itself a day day. Um, I don't see any headline today on ORCL. I'm looking to yesterday as well on the 10th. Nothing that I really like here from Oracle. Let's look on the 9th. Um, okay, not really. So nothing specific to Oracle. Uh, you, you, did you check? I'm looking right now, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, yeah, so Adara's checked as well. She's not seeing anything, so pretty much seems to be consensus at the moment. Good day for Oracle, just no catalyst. We'll keep eyes on it. Keep me updated, Elon. Yeah, I mean, definitely let us know, Elon. Uh, we must be aware. No, I'm joking. But, yeah, please let us know if there is anything on Oracle. I think earlier Elon was mentioning it's a swing play, so it might mm. just be, like, overall gotcha. straight. So, um, but, yeah, with that... Nice look there on Oracle. We can't see the future, but we can see strengthening charts when it, oh, when it comes out oh. there. So. Yeah, got to be aware of that. Also, try to be aware of the SPY here. I am still interested in this one. Yeah, shout out to, to Kyle Burdett talking to me as well. Um, my issue was, and I would echo kind of what was said there in the chat, I got in initially on this too early. So my average wasn't great, but mainly the reason I got out, because I'm trying to be a little bit less into the PL, is I did not like that big swoop they, that up into 5.14.20s. I did end up getting out pretty much get it, Katina, man. top wick here, which was a little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. I'm noticing we have like this nice kind of move back into 80s and then a rejection from 80s into 50s or 60s. So the plan is to try to play that right now. That's what I'm going to be trying to do with slightly smaller size. I, I do, I like these little baby spy ranges uh, based on, a, like I said, a combination of the book and the chart. So if I can keep playing those, I would be pleased as punch. Pamp. Um, pamp or damp, I guess. <laughs> damp, damp, yeah, yeah, we're dampen. You're damp. We already yeah. wet our beak there at 40s for a nice 25 penny winner. That was super quick, Adara, on that short on TSLH, doing the dance with no pants right now at the volume weighted average price. Let it come down, baby. The Katina man is short Tesla too. Let me tell you that, and he's pumped about it. So let's see if we can get a move down into that 170 area uh, or thereabouts. You know, Tesla is a bit of a bamboozler. You know, 
Adara likes to give Tesla all these nicknames and that's not for no reason. Because it's stressful, you know, the, what else you got? You got Stressla, you um, got Bessla, Depressla. Yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole host there's of whole, feelings that Tesla can cause an individual to, what was that Chilean nightmare? What, what do you say? Frazzla, Fra, like frazzled? Frazzla? Frazzla, okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. Uh, so shout out to the Chilean nightmare there on the ones and twos, baby. Ram Ram is back tomorrow, and uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll give her a, a how do you do when she comes back. Dependent subsidiaries operate over 200 post-acute care facilities across nine states serving over 20,000 patients only, says Sebastian. I'm assuming you are talking about um, the new uh, IPO. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that, Sebastian. That, that goes under ticker P-A-C-S, new IPO, just launched today. Keep your eye on it. It's done about, uh, I think, a few million shares a day. Yeah, that is um, definitely IPOs are, are the way to go. I think especially lately, we're kind of seeing a bit of an IPO resurgent, a mild resurgence there. And I think honestly, too, I it was cool to, to start here when I did, which was around when we had that ARM IPO, right? So I think that was um, really cool. And I think gave like a nice, that was my first IPO I witnessed. The first one I traded was the ill-fated Birkenstock uh, situation. I say ill-fated because A, it did not do well, and B, I did not have a plan. But I think the great thing, too, is that... Um, Getting to see every IPO, you can see A, how they're different, and B, how you want to have a strategy. So, and this brings in us into um, the super chat from Ahmed, Amwala, uh, AED729, Reddit long now, why not? Exclamation point, exclamation point. So let's see. Um, and the reason I, I use that transition is because Reddit was a recent IPO. That was certainly a fun one. Both of us took that one on the show there on the midday. Whew! Right, it's a nice look. Yeah, I see what you mean. Why not indeed? I think really for me, the thing that clinched this is we have two roundy face formations and both times we eclipsed that earlier area of resistance. So here we had a little bit of resistance um, and which then formed support, interestingly enough, around 43.40. Then we pop into this 43.80 and when we eclipse that, Moon City for Reddit there. Um, so this is a nice look. I do like this RDDT. Um, formation there on let me switch to the five minute because I'm on the one minute right now because I'm trying to play Nvidia but yeah this, this situation on reddit on the five minutes really nice as well just running that 90 ma to the upside um, so this a, yeah this is a really nice one um, reddit spread all over saying k dubs yeah, you might also want to say spread it um, this one right now about a six penny spread so I think definitely worse for the IPO uh, like at the IPO I think we had a much more significant spread here but yeah reddit Spread definitely not not great right now. Right now, it's just got to 30 pennies. So, I mean, I'm going to stop narrating the stock, but this is a gorgeous look. Um, also, another super chat here coming. Thank you so much, everybody. Donnie Zimbabwe, 4.99 super Jeez. chat. Nvidia Kings detesting that 8.90. Kind of split in whether it retraces back towards that 8.85 to 8.86. So, yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit biased because I'm trying to get involved in this guy for a long, or sorry, a short. But I think with Nvidia... I, I do see the long formation possibility, and that's with that. We do have that kind of bull flagish area, right? We test this, and this is a cool breakout, too. We get to the 882. We test it twice with higher lows both times. Then we ascend with a beauty, with a viciousness, with a swiftness, what have you. But now we're consolidating. We're kind of doing some chop and churn. I, do, I see what you mean, though. We're riding this 90 MA beautifully on, on the five-minute chart. And we are seeing a little bit of potentially a bull flag pattern. So we'll have to see which way the flag, the wind will blow and which <laughs> direction this flag will go. Right now it is holding up well on, um, in terms of above this 90 MA, above the 887. If I were to go short, which like I said, I'm still interested and I still have an order waiting, that would be very short term, just trying to scalp it a little bit and play ranges because that's what we're all about here. Or that's what I'm always all about, but that's also what the lesson of the day is right now. So I think I got, I was a little too ambitious with my point of entry, 888 to about 886, at least on the one minute, looking like the range du jour, or at least the range for this hour. So that's kind of what I what I have my eye on here. Tesla, what are you doing? Like, Yeah, I got out of that. Oh, Profitable yeah. on it though, but got the hell out of Dodge because it's, it's strong. Apple too, I'm really upset about this Apple trade because uh, you know I should have been giving it more room on the stock. Full, full stop, 169 defend. You gotta assume $169 stock's gonna break a level by at least five pennies. And I don't know why the hell I didn't have my stop below uh, where it was. But anyway, it looks like I got stopped out bottom wake. And then, you know, true to form, it moves up 40 pennies after that. So uh, we'll, we'll try to weasel our way back into that. But let me tell you what else I want to weasel my way into. And it goes by the name 
or the ticker, I should say, R-E-N-T. How many times are we going to get VWAP dips and holds here on R-E-N-T? And this is a kind of... The, the trade that I like with these small cap gappers, get them off a retracement on a key level of support. And while the volume weighted average price typically features as a key level of either support or resistance, depending on where the price action is. But anyway, look at that dip right here at 11.15, right into that 170, well, sorry, 17 and a quarter. You got another dip around 11.30, right back into that one, or sorry, that 17 and a quarter. I can't get it straight today, man. Oh my God. Um, so we'll see exactly what we get from here because it's a dollar fifty off that one. How many times are we going to say one? Off that seventeen and a quarter dip. Okay, so keeping an eye on RENT, I think that this one uh, might provide opportunities for us. Great, uh, great look there. And I was showing uh, Adara where this one was trading back in November of 2021. This was like five hundred dollars. So, yeah, and they split too, by the way. Uh, keep that in mind. There was a 20 to 1 split on April 3rd to bring this company back into compliance. It had broken below a dollar and therefore was uh, at risk of getting delisted off the, the NASDAQ exchange. So RENT in play today and we'll keep eyes on it. Uh, what else is going on here? MNDR, that uh, IPO from yesterday, uh, big topping tail candle. Capping out at 10 and a half. Now it's down into that $9 territory. Still trading, though, above the volume weighted average price. So we'll see if this one can hold above VWAP. If it can, it's still in play. But keep your eye on this one because it is, it is a little spready at times. Uh, I didn't have the level two up for all that long. But for the time that I did, I noticed that um, it was unusually spready for a $9 and change name. What the hell is Apple doing, bro? Apple is oh camping God. to the high side here. 169.50 incoming. That's HOD. We just printed 52s. That's high day. Apple now up 1%. Feeling very silly for having gotten stopped out there at 168.95. Uh, good to go here is AAPL. No specific news today on Apple. Um, let me just double check before I. Uh, they had misspeak. a downgrade, or they had a price. Yeah, target that was increase. J.P. Morgan. It was a price target downgrade by five bucks. But um, yeah, what else? I had some other stuff on Apple. Oh yeah, that hack, that hack that's targeting people in uh, in government in some of these countries. Uh, no, other than that, nothing really specific, and nothing really to warrant a one percent move. In fact, the the headline was probably a little bit to the contrary. Yoel Reyna. What do you think of HYMC? It's been good to me lately. All right, let's have a look. HYMC says, UL. Bring in the side chart over here and have a look at what that bad boy is. HYMC. Oops. Highcroft. Highcroft Mining Holding Corp. 93 and almost $94 million market cap. The float guys, 18 and a quarter million shares. What does this company do? Silver Exploration That's Development. The, uh, that's the mine that AMC got involved with. Thank you, Katina Man, for reminding me about that. So this is, remember when AMC got involved in gold and, and silver mining? I guess this company was it here. That all that had us all going, Arr? Arr? right? So we yeah. didn't really understand what's going like on the over M there. the M stands for mining and AMC. Hey, there you go, there you, you go. <laughs> HYMC, let's put it in. I'm happy it's been good to you, Yoel. Let's have a look at uh, what it's doing on the day. Is there a headline? No headline today for HYMC. In fact, I'm looking back as far as the fifth, and I don't see a headline. So that's, that's okay. Let's zoom out a little bit here, look at the hourly, figure out what it's been doing lately. That's a good-looking chart, I'll tell you that, man. Shout out to you, Yoel. Something's afoot here, and something was definitely afoot on April 2nd. So let me go back to April 2nd and see what was popping off there. And in fact, nothing was, there's no, there's no catalyst for this, unless you see one. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, support, now that we've cleared this $4 area, I'm gonna have to go and say $4 support, no doubt, that's on the hourly. Let's switch to the five minute, figure out how we can weasel our way into this trade. I'm gonna say locally, four and a quarter looks like an awfully good area for a dip trade. Reason being, you obviously have this area of resistance here initially at 9.55, 10, 10.05. We couldn't break through that four and a quarter only to dip down to 3.85 and then come back with the viciousness. The dare like say, here comes that four and a half. We already have that 457 HOD. And you'll notice guys, that the majority of the volume 
is taking place at the higher end here of the price range, right? Where maybe you were thinking, okay, well, that opening range looks really good while well, the volume is still coming in at these prices over here, 445. A lot of interest in this one. It's up 30 and a half percent on the day. Thank you uh, to Yoel for telling me about that because that's going to go on the coveted side chart uh, position over here so we can keep tabs on this bad boy in case it wants to do things and uh, maybe we can trade it to, with good effect. Yeah, we always have to, it's always nice when things do things, oh, right? It. It's always cool when stocks are doing things. Apple, yeah, Apple taking a big bite out of the market here. Just Tim Cook into the upside. So upset about I that. am like, you know, getting a little bit, speaking of cooking, a little bit like Crispy and Burt here in this spy short. We're going to see what we do here at 30s, but nice it looks chart. like we're going to have to get out because um, I'm not I'm not loving this. I'm trying to be a little bit more Maybe patient. Maybe in chart. Trying to be a little bit more patient with this one um, because I was really impatient with my exit in the last one. I think my point of entry here is better, but I also can't, I can't force it, right? We're still below this previous area of support, so I'm going to watch to see what we do with the book here. We've got to 30s and then skirt, skirted away a little bit, like scattered, so I'm going to... We're going to be patient. Also, trying, uh, struggling to be patient here in the NVDA short. I'm still good with this. We have not, my, my out is, our, my stop is 889. We haven't even like really approached 889. We kind of skirted up to it and then. So you know what, uh, Nvidia, do your thing 21. Oh. If that thing is, you know, staying away from 889s, please just punch. Um, so yeah, so this is actually pretty happy with this Nvidia. It's always funnier when you're less when you're in an Nvidia trade, and that's the less stressful of your trades. It's always kind of a weird feeling. But I'm actually pretty calm in Nvidia. I know that's like an oxymoron almost. Yeah, like not stressful Nvidia. Yeah, I'm what? just like, hey girl, do your thing. <laughs> but yeah, so I yeah honestly, Nvidia is not my problem child today, which is like shocking. Um, this queue though, this pop up in the queue is making me nervous. I'm gonna have to get out of this is this spy post haste. <laughs> Um, what was that? You missed that. That was like some weird looking creature. Where's that from, Neil? I don't know where it's from. Wow, Neil just disowned me, I guess, as a friend here. <laughs> What'd you say, uh, Chilean nightmare? Calamarian? Oh, is that like a playoff calamari? No way, oh, that's I had no cool. idea. Neil, can you hit that again so people can know what we're talking about? Thank you. It's a crap. All right, uh, sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay, that was good. There's a calamari yeah. on the screen, we have to address it. That's you know true, I mean? and also, like, yeah, I mean, I feel like it could be a trap here in NVIDIA, just with it being, like, nice to me, you know? <laughs> when does that happen? But, so we'll have to wait and find out what's happening here. Um, yeah, the thing is, too, is, so, so Z, I see your comment here. Yeah, I actually don't feel like NVIDIA is working against me right now, and I say that because, I mean, that could change, but right now, we're like basically we're, we're pretty flat in this. We're about twenty pennies out of the money, and I'm pretty pretty calm in this trade right now. So I don't really have a reason to leave. But I see what you mean. I am worried we could break out of this to the upside. But I've never watched Star Wars. Me neither. Okay, good. We're, we're I saw part of one of them, but I fell asleep. Yeah, I know. I, look, I promise you, I've been meaning to do it. And you and I were talking, Chile and Nightmare, about the order that you can watch them in, and there's different orders online. All right, Tesla is at the level that I like. Uh, so we're going short Tesla at these levels over here. The reason I'm going short Tesla here, 171.80, uh, 171.75 thereabouts. That's yesterday's closing print. Uh, so I'll just take it off that level and see if we can uh, wet our beak here on some profits. I'm going to put a profit taker down here. We'll see exactly what we get. But Tesla has been strong, well, not strong on the day. It's kind of been recovered. It recovered off that 168.50. Took it short initially, got out. Now it's at the area that I like, specifically that 171.80, 171.75. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if it breaks above, I think um, so. I'm long 56s. I'll give this to about 75. Breaks above 75, I'm going to get out. Even though uh, the yeah the level is 78. Well, it's not going to respect the level exactly. So. We'll have to wait and see what we get. A big topping tail candle here coming in on the Fuge. Uh, I don't know how Dan the Man Emmons feels about this, but we made a, a bit of an attempt here at 18.3, 18.288. Big topping tail candle being put in here on the five minute chart. If it, puts, if it closes like this, this is awfully bearish. Uh, lay out here, coming down aggressively here about 20 points. You don't want to put too much stock into one candle, but that's not what you want to see if you're looking long on the Fuge here. Uh, so we'll keep eyes on that. Uh, what else we got? Sebastian, you are 
you are going for a Tesla. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? What does that mean? Hit it, Katina Man. The Katina Man is printing on that NVDA short. Shout out to the Katina Man. 350 Ooh. in the money, 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 and money. Believe it or not. Uh, Dan the Man Emmons, NQ short, 18284 stop. 18.3, I love it, Dan. I was thinking the exact same thing. Targeting 18.230, 18.216, 18.195. I hope you print, buddy. I hope you get all of those profit targets. Shout out to Dan the Man Emmons. Yeah, Darwin's saying here, asking the question we all have, when do we get a Fabian crypto segment? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yeah, someone asked that big. in the chat, Fabian. There you go, Chilean yeah. Nightmare. People uh, the want the to people know. are demanding it. <laughs> there he is. Oh my God. Yeah, he, I love it. I love down. it. I love yeah. like the 80s energy. Natural on the camera, too. Killing eh? it. Love it. Yeah, also killing it. Sean, congrats to Sean with the NVIDIA short. I'm out of my Never. NVIDIA short, but I have no complaints because I, I had a plan. My plan was to play it into the 887s. I got out of the 887s. Please just punch. I want to say, too, I want to address something in the. In the um, presentation that I thought was cool was with regards to FOMO, I actually find range trading helps me combat FOMO. Now that might sound kind of funny, but I want to explain why is because if I have a clear level, if I have a target and I get out according to that target, I'm not going to be worried I missed out because I had a plan and I stuck to that plan. We could have more movement after the fact, but whew, whew, I don't care. I had what I did what I wanted to do with the stock. So one example is Disney last week. I was short Disney last week. Let's actually pull up DIS. Um, going into that event, and I had like about a 25 penny range I was trying to play. Uh, I want to say event, I mean when we had that Nelson Peltz vote. So I got short Disney heading into the vote um, because I, I really like the range on it. So we get out uh, because we get to the bottom of the range. And then we dropped another dollar, but I didn't have too much. I had a little bit of FOMO, I'm not going to lie, but I didn't have too much FOMO because it was like, Adara, your plan was to play this for the range. You have the range. Be happy. So that's what I'm trying to do, and that's why I'm a little bit displeased as Punch um, with what I did in the spy. I was not, this was just not my best move. I was a little too patient. I kept getting out like bottom or top wick on these shorts. So I'm gonna stay away from the spy for the time being unless I see something I really like. This is just happy I got out where I needed to get out, but I just think it was, I should have been a little bit quicker on the draw than I actually was, and that's okay. That is okay. Cash cow, NVIDIA. Whew. Yeah, Sean's still in video for the win video. So shout out to Sean there on that one. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we had um, Michelle Muir mentioning Chewy. I also couldn't find any news on Chewy there. But let's see. Um, let's see what we have. In, oh, it's in on the NY. Okay. Um, in Momento. Um, here we go. Chewy, yeah, up about 4.75%. Nice look. Look at this little roundy bottom we have here. Also interesting too, we get a little bit of uh, support at this 1765, which is a Scotia pre-market resistance. Then we ramp to the upside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven five-minute candles, all green. This could be a top and tail happening in the five minutes, so I would be cognizant of that. But other than that, I mean, this is a, this is a nice look, and we do still have another two minutes for that five minutes, so we could actually um, erase this top and tail action I'm kind of seeing right now. Let's look at the daily and see what we're... we're what the appetite is on Chewy. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. So to me, I'm seeing a clear level of resistance, 1850. Look where we had previous support on the daily, that would be 1850. We also had a little bit of chop and churn with the top of the range being 1850. So to me, this 1850 is a spicy area. Ooh. Chewy, if you wanna break above that 1850 level, I think that could be an interesting change of pace for this one on the daily chart. Right now though, massive move, no news that I can see here, uh, but the market's certainly digesting Chewy quite nicely. Chewy. Um, yeah, I have no, I wish I had more trades happening here right now. Um, but yeah, we got out of NVIDIA. Really happy with how that went. Sean's still in NVIDIA for the win video. So nice look there. Uh, we just printed on TSLA for a nice 20 penny winner waiting for this one. Hopefully, I hate to use the word hopefully, but I want a VWAP retracement of sorts. We're short um, at the 56 area, wet my beak over here. Second trade on TSLA, one long, one, one short. Le oh, actually, sorry, they're both short. Um, so let's see exactly what we get. I mean, if we continue uh, to come down, I'm going to be targeting that. Let me tell you exactly, 170, 75 area. That is where the volume weighted average price is currently hanging out. And down it goes into the 30s. Go, baby, go. Um, 
on TSLA. Conversely, look at what AAPL is doing back into HOD, 169.62 high a day. We're printing 55s right now. Apple's still doing the dance here with 1%. Um, for whatever reason, Apple feels feeling itself today. So we'll, we'll continue to keep eyes on AAPL, but down goes Tesla into the 20 penny area. Whoa. Yes, sir, into 171.20s, Katina man. Uh, so we're gonna continue to wait for this one to come into hopefully our target area of 170 and, uh, and three quarters. Oh, oh geez. Palantir, how are we gonna do a walk and talk? There's no yeah. way it can be a walk and talk today. It's I raining. Out, so gotcha, do you want an umbrella? I got one. All right, all right. And just trying to help out, brother. That. Just trying to help out. Shout out to the Katina man. Watch out for that walk and talk. It's going to be coming soon. So, uh, yeah, if you follow the Katina man on the gram, well, you know exactly what's up then. So, yeah, keeping an eye on that. AMZN doing things here. It's coming in. Uh, it's about a quarter penny off HOD. Uh, let's see what else people are talking about. K Debs, A V G O for the soul creep up. Let's see what Broadcom's up to today. Let's bring in a side chart over here with the volume profile and have a look at Broadcom. Okay, it's a good look today on Broadcom. Do we have a catalyst? We do not, I don't believe. One moment, please. No, we don't have a Broadcom catalyst today. I don't see one either from yesterday or the day prior. No, here we go. We do have one uh, from Monday and that, Tuesday, excuse me, that was, um, the migrating the workloads to uh, the Google Cloud. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, remember that? Yeah. VMware. Feels so like that was like weeks ago. Yeah, right? Um, okay, so we'll keep an eye on that. I mean, it is a 13, almost $1,400 name here, so that is gonna, it's, it's a bit tougher to manage risk. Anyway, I gotta look at this Tesla trade here because it's right back into my entry. It dipped down into the 20s, but right back into the 60s it goes. Stressla doing things, but I wanna see exactly what it's gonna do above that key area that we talked about, and that is yesterday's closing print at 171 and three quarters. Yeah, also shout out, um, shout out to K-Debs here as well for hey, pointing dude. out this Micron range trade, oh. which I am really happy with so far. I mean, I say so far we got in seconds ago, so well, it'd be really scary if I just got in and it was already like ruining my right. life choices. But no, in all seriousness, <laughs> I actually really like this range and thank you so much. We have a great community. I always love when people point out stuff like this. Look, look at this bottom. We have this really nice bottom here at 124.10s. We have these little wicks to the downside that buyers eat right back up. Ooh. And then we pop up into 124.40, then we pop back down. I have no problem scalping this in and out of this range. To me, this is, this is the range of the day. Um, maybe not, maybe we'll change our minds on that, but right now I really like it. Speaking of things though, coming into areas of interest, NVIDIA, you wanna come back into 888 and reject. <laughs> you know who's not gonna be upset about it? Me, I like it. So I'm gonna, I got, like, I'll go, like I'll go, I'll coaxing switch. it into what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, and I got all switched back in the chair there too. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Set up, great. <laughs> so I think this NVIDIA could be interesting. I had a lot of fun in that short, and like I said, I did get out early, but I'm not, actually not FOMOing it because that was part of the plan. So you cannot have FOMO if the plan went according. I mean, you still can, to be clear. There still can be FOMO. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't. Oh, but yeah. it's like I feel like it's a little bit easier, at least for me, as I was saying earlier, to combat the FOMO when I just stick to my range. And I know the range, you have your range. Now you, now you get to, to keep on going. So what are other people looking at here? Um, oh, Marvell. Vanessa was mentioning Mar Marvell. And Marvell had that AI era event. And now, ooh, ooh. Marvell, you coming into support? Okay, okay. Looks like we could be getting um, into that 10, 15 area. Also, Go this fell on good news. Marvell uh, was announcing like, oh, we actually see uh, tripling, potential tripling of our AI revenue, which you think would be good news. It was a bit of a sell the news event, it looks like, but hey, with this VWAP persistence and this 60, uh, 69, 60 support, there might be another chip name on my side charts and its name might be MRVL. Oh. So quickly gonna take a look at Google. Shout out to Joanna Brewster, apparently in the dollar plus club on this one. This is gorgeous. Higher highs, yes, yes, yes. Look at this bounce off the 9 EMA. This is a gorgeous trade, shout out to you. Don't have to Google search for a long here. It just came right up and showed it to you. But I heard someone <laughs> saying, um, saying some excited We wet our beaks, baby. We wet our beaks in the mid teens there on TSLA. That trade is over the trade that's uh, yeah, catching my attention right now is this Apple trade. It is on the way to 170. At least that's how I feel. 
I'll be looking to short AAPL at 170. That's my look there. Uh, you know how I feel about the $10 levels as key areas of both support and resistance on Apple. We saw what 170 did as support. Now I wanna see what it can do as resistance. So if Apple makes its way up to 170, I want the smoke, I want all the smoke, right? But we're gonna try to play this, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a bamboozlement, okay? And by, by that I mean, you know, we're not, we may not even come up to 170, and if we do, we could break it uh, to kind of try to force everybody out, the specialist breakout as we speak, or the, remember we were talking about yesterday, the false breakouts, right? So keep your eye on that, and if maybe if you're, if you're less risk averse, uh, you allow the rejection to form, and then you get a worse price, not 170, but maybe 169, mid 80s, high 70s, something like that. Uh, we'll wait and see exactly what AAPL uh, sets up for. Arian, rent near VWAP. Let's have a look. R-E-N-T is what Arian is talking about there. Let's pull up the side chart with the volume profile over here and have a look at rent. Good look. Good look. I love it. Um, the reason I'm not super quick to jump into this, Arian, is is third time a charm. In, in trading, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel the first and the second ones may be a little bit better, but who knows? Maybe this is, this is the right trade here. It's just, it's spready and it's volatile. And it's hard to manage risk, even with small size. Yeah, I'm trying to think about how I would weasel my way into this. Like, I would have to have a very specific price and I think I would have to get filled at the third of a dollar. The one, the, sorry, the 17, 33, 1735 would have to be right at the volume weighted average price. I'm really reluctant to chase it, you know, 60 pennies off VWAP because that's where it is right now, hanging out at 18 bucks. I get it. It's at the low end of the range when you look, you know, from 1115 onwards, the range is essentially 20 bucks to the high side and 17 or 17 and a quarter to the downside, right? But you're talking about, you know, $2.75 worth of range there. So I think what I may do is I may set up a resting order at the half dollar or a little bit below the half dollar. I'm talking about the 17 half dollar here on RENT. It's just I got cut up already on it. And let me show you exactly what happened here. Before the show started, I was trying to trade rent. And yeah, this was a bigger loser than it looks like here, guys, because it's just, it's monstrous in its uh, movement. So I got in here on the move back up at 20 and a quarter and the slippage was insane. I actually had a stop below 20 in the 1990s, uh, okay? And I gave it about 20 pennies of room between the stop trigger price and the limit. And it still blew through my stop. Like it didn't even matter. I'd have to use a market stop here. Look where I ended up getting stopped out. It was like almost 50 pennies worth of slippage on this stupid stock. 1940, I ended up getting stopped out. So I almost lost a dollar a share on this uh, R-E-N-T, such is the nature of this name. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to kind of take the good with the bad here. So I'd rather have a dip trade set up at 17 and a half, 17 and a third, rather than trying to chase this monster because I already got punched in the face um, by this stupid thing. So I may, I may change my opinion on it the, later in the day, especially if I end up positive on it, so who knows. Oh, I, I got signed out. Can I send it to you for a sec? Because I got signed yeah, out of the sure. chat here. Yeah, I know that it's like really weird with you sending in and out of the chat. You know what it is? Because we're on work emails, right? Oh, right. So okay. it does it on purpose. It that signs you out periodically so that if somebody comes on your computer, they don't hack your stuff. Once a month, the Chilean nightmare says. I think that that's accurate. Yeah, it's okay, about that once makes a month. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't notice it. But, um, but yeah, so that is, we're going to make sure that Sharif is all good with that. Also, NVIDIA breaking above into this. Uh, we're going to watch what we do here because I think we might need to be exiting this trade. We did take some profit on this, so I was pleased as punch right now. I am not pleased as punch. NVIDIA, what are you going to do here at um, 88.950s? Let's see. Um, I'm going to stay in this for now. I'm trying to be calm. I'm happy with this. I'm not trying to trade this on PL, trying to trade this on the stock itself. So we're breathing. Nice, Very proud of myself for just trying to breathe here in NVDA. Uh, small victories. You're talking about the psychology of trading. So what kind of person would I be if I started, like, you know, freaking <laughs> nice out yourself. here? yourself. 
Um, pardon? Be nice to yourself. Right, exactly. Yeah. So just like. What just happened to the market here? We We're flying up. here, Adara. Yeah. Uh, the market just blew through 18.3 like it's nobody's business. Big, big move up. Did we have an auction or something or what's going on here? 12 o'clock. So we never really know. There is the market. We were talking about 18.3 being that key area of resistance on the future. And it just blew through that with no stoppage. 18.3, 2, 2 and a half HOD right now on the NQ. And that's precipitated a whole bunch of up moves here on the MAG7. Nothing is without a nice big up move uh, right now. NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, they're all moving, guys, to the high side here. So eyes on the future, there. Yeah, I cannot. Oh my gosh, NVIDIA does not. She wants me to stay in NVIDIA. I'm like, ma'am, we're trying to leave here, girl. Um, here we go. We're out, NVIDIA. Uh, a little late. Not not the best exit of my life, going to be really honest. But also, it's like, Adara, why are you going long Marvell and, and Micron and short NVIDIA at the same time, right? So... It's okay. Do you know what happened? It's okay. You just you have to be um, you have to be calm. You have to be nice to yourself. I know we did. I think I had a Fed speaker coming at twelve. But oh, a lot okay. of these I've noticed they've been coming earlier than they're supposed to. Like Barkin started barking before ten, but he was supposed to start at ten. Like, come on, bro. So it's I'm noticing it could be that. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you can see here, we have we have the Nvidia failure. I should have gotten out of this a little bit earlier. I think maybe I was a little bit too too calm on it. But you know what? We still had some winning trades on this. Even this last trade, we did take some profit on it. I should have taken more profit than I did, and that's okay. Okay. You've so got to be nice to yourself. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, I have to remind myself that too, Adara. So, uh, all right, Fed Collins dropping hot lines at 12 o'clock. So Fed Collins started speaking at 12. And at 1, we have the 30-year bond auction. So a couple of market-moving events here midday. In addition to that 1 o'clock bond auction, uh, Bostic is going to dro drop hot lines at 1.30. So two Fed speakers during the midday or had a trade today. Collins at speaking now, apparently, and Bostic at 1.30, as well as the 30-year note auction at 1 o'clock. Big stuff here. All right, we got to go back to Apple here because Apple is at 170 now, okay? The HOD is 169.96 here on AAPL. So let's watch now. Does this area act as a level of resistance? Um, and is the move to get in here or to wait to the actual touch, break, and reject? I mean, so many different possibilities here on this AAPL trade. We're going to have to watch for this one and a quarter percent of the high side right now on Apple as it comes into key resistance. Yeah, I mean, Apple's an interesting one. We, I am still, I, I'm in this Marvell. I'm just marveling at this Marvell. I initially was like, do you want to get involved in this when you do have the ongoing catalyst of a, um, there's an event, there's a word for the name, there's a name, oh my goodness, words. What, what happened? AI era. That's the word I was looking for. But it ended. That was the end of the AI era. So uh, we're going to, oh, we have something yeah. to speak, though. All right, here it comes. There's stuff trickling out from the Fed Collins. Speak, sorry to interrupt you, Dare. No uh, Fed Collins says recent data argue against imminent need to change rates. Still expects rate cuts this year. May take more time for economy to moderate as needed. Economic strength may. What, what, what is this? OJ? I don't know what this word is. Auger? Auger. Okay. I guess I don't know how to speak English. It may auger. It's a weird word. Few, so it does, is that a word? It is a word. But what does it mean? I honestly, like, it's one of those, it you know those words that you know, but you're like, if someone, like, paid you to define it, you'd probably, like. Hold on. I have I you talking. It, apparently. I'm going to find out. Auger definition. Oh, the drill. is the auger. Fabian's saying the drill used to make ice. It is, holes yeah. Auger. It may. Okay, I didn't actually know that that was it. I would have called it a drill bit. I don't know. Yeah. Have you? Okay, I didn't it's know. It's a drill that. bit for wells. Bears are just bulls saying the same thing. This thing over here? Yeah, okay. It's this, uh, it's, a, it's a helical drill bit, okay? That's it. A tool with a helical bit for boring holes in wood. I didn't know that, guys, all right? Sorry. Me either. I'm not a woodworker. Uh, may auger fewer rate cuts. Disinflation likely to con likely to continue to be uneven, okay? For whatever reason, that's popped the market up. So we're going to keep our eye on 18.3 as now we're rejecting that 18.326 uh, HOD at the moment. So uh, keeping an eye on Apple and keeping an eye on the future. Tesla also is popping up here, Adara. Big moves midday in the market. Indeed, yeah. For this, for this little range trader, it's a little bit of a gonna catch your breath. A little doing bit. things. It's doing things. I'm so proud of what I did with Nvidia, even though I ended up taking an L with some of it, as Twenty One Savage says.
um, taking less L's, making more M's. That's what we're trying to do over here. So that's all good. It's okay. Marvell, don't love that topping tail candle embarrassing golfing you're pulling right now. Um, if you'd like to stop doing that, that'd be great. Um, but no, uh, the markets don't care about your feelings and neither does the stocks. That's okay. Clearly. As long as we stay, um, <laughs> I'm sure you're just saying clearly. <laughs> as long as we stay above this area of resist or support, I'm good. But it looks like this bearish engulfing candle is just going to engulf everything. I didn't mind this trade, but right now I will, and that's okay. But shout out to K Dabs, though, for pointing out this, mar yep. this micron range. I was very happy with this trade. Get involved in the bottom of the range. Get out of the top of the range. I didn't want to rinse repeat it because to me this looks a little bit bull flaggish, so I'd rather take it long at the bottom if we come back into 124.12s. But shout out to you. Sounds like K-Dabs also took some profit when we had that move up to the top of the range. This is the type of trade I like. This is the type of trade I need to be keeping my eye on. What are you doing messing with the spy, Adara? Not taking out your whole profit in NVIDIA, but... It's all in the past. Shout out to Sam for saying, you know, there's always next time, which I appreciate. That's something I need to remember and keep in mind. But Brad Gober asking for our two cents on coins. So let's give um, Coinbase. A I have no words. Whew. <laughs> what the hell is going on today, bro? Yeah, I mean, it looks like coin is way off the base there. We had this little base <laughs> here on Coinbase at this. Well, there we go. We have Bitcoin back above 70,000. We have this little base on coin above that. 248. Uh, oh, Coinbase has successfully launched Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin futures contracts. Thank you, Sharif, there for that is. one. There it is. And that came in midday, too. Sorry, I read that newsletter. Yeah, it's all good. Here, well, for everybody to see, Coinbase Derivatives has successfully launched Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin futures contracts. That's available now on the Coinbase network. And let me tell you when that headline came in, it came in at 1126. When did the price action? on Coinbase start moving and doing things here. Surprise, surprise, 1135, okay. So it is likely to be this headline, but we're gonna have to keep an eye on that and keep an eye on Apple. Apple is now HOD 170.04 on AAPL. Now, are we gonna get a touch and crash or what are we gonna do here on Apple? I'm not gonna short here willy nilly at the 170. I need to see a rejection of sorts. I may manifest in so many different ways, right? So I'm going to pack my patients here on Apple um, at these levels. Yes, and it Is looks like we, yeah, it might have okay. the lesson of the day. Yep. Uh, I haven't heard anything yet. Are we good to go on that? Yep. Yes, we are. So now, without further ado, always the real deal. His name is Neil, and he has the lesson of the day. Welcome to your lesson of the day brought to you by Real Trading, where you can put real trades on, grow your trading career at the best place to do so. And today's lesson is every single trade that you make, if you buy, somebody has to sell. So I know that's an obvious point. I try to start things out with sort of like an easy thought. However, when you are trading any strategy, one of the things I find traders are not considering are the potential counterparties to their trade. So at the moment you are getting in, what is the psychology of somebody going the other direction on that same stock? Uh, it could be maybe you're trading futures, it could be uh, you could be trading crypto, whatever it might be. But what is the thought process about somebody on the other side? And there are different time frame horizons to consider. Maybe someone entering at that price on the other side is a long-term trader and you're a short-term trader. That's typically fine. But when, it's, when you have opposing ideas, you want to at least consider your opponent. When you sit down at the poker table, yes, you got to play the cards in front of you. Yes, you want to understand pot odds. Yeah, you want to know the rules of the game. But you do also want to understand the opponent across the table from you and what they are thinking. Because it's not always the fact that you have the strongest hand that allows you to win. It can be that someone is just in a very weak spot and then a decent hand becomes an absolute monster versus someone who's in that tough spot. I think that's why I wanted to talk about this. Because I'm gonna, we, look at these, we look at these charts in a short term as a day trader, a one, three, a five minute chart on something like an NVIDIA and you look at all of these levels, it's like, oh, it gets so clear, like something like a double top, which was a short trade for me. And what I like to think about here, and why I actually got away from the short after, after it even worked is, okay, well, the second time it tested up, why do I not like it anymore as a short trader? Who is the person that is buying when I am trying to sell? And what is their mentality? 
Well, if you were to zoom it out, and I'm gonna go to a, I'm gonna go to a, well, I can go to a daily chart, not that it matters that much. But okay, Nvidia is in a bit of a pullback. It actually just turned around a move. So if you were to think about somebody that might be, say, swing trading. Now, somebody with a higher time frame is going to say, well, the stock just double bottomed on the daily after a pullback off the high and made a double bottom, a reversal on an economic number, and is now breaking out and is trying to break this local high. There are certainly trades that would like it long here to there to then make a new fresh run at the high of the day. It's actually almost an entry on a longer term time frame for this bit of a breakout. And a lot of those types of longs have the types of stops that could be giving it to 860, that can be giving it to 840, that are not necessarily giving it to five. Like how many day traders are going to be taking that trap long? I would suggest the shorter time frame traders long would have been looking at levels like 875 for a breakout, where it's the local range into there. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that Nvidia is, you know, is gonna go up from here. I'm not saying that by any stretch of the imagination, but you start to realize, okay, well, most of the alpha that I'm trying to get on that short trade would be short-term traders kind of panicking, getting trapped at that top to get me a VWAP retracement. It doesn't look quite so good when I zoom that one out and start re reimagining what that trade is going to look like. I think they're not really scared until it gets underneath 880. And then the swing traders aren't scared till it gets underneath 860. So it does change the mentality of that trade. Now the difference here and why I pivoted to AMD, and I kind of spoil it by showing you the 15 minute chart, is AMD, if you look at the difference in the trend, it is still, con trend down recently, consolidative bottom. So you've got this 172, which was support, now turning into resistance in the low 70s into 165. But it's holding that range at the bottom. So what I like about this here is all of a sudden when you're looking for the short off of that top, anybody going long into an even break at 170, you've got people that are trapped into an even dollar break into overhead resistance, which is one of the things I love. Like I, I absolutely love when I'm taking a short and anyone taking a long that doesn't zoom out has overhead resistance in front of them at the 171 and the 172, because that means they're more likely to panic. It's still hanging out inside the range for the majority of traders. It's not scaring a bunch of people by breaking out of those tops. You haven't really entered a level where swing traders are like set it and forget it. If it goes to 73 or 75, maybe they're long in here and giving it to like a 160 or a 165. You have none of that nonsense going on in AMD, but you did in Nvidia. And I think that's, it's one of these things that I've been caught time and time again that I, I'm not considering the counterparties of that trade. And yes, you're, you could be up, I could be up against a day trader, you sell, someone else buys, uh, you could be up against a swing trader, heck, it could be an institutional investor. But at least considering where somebody else's head is at is going to matter. And as I said, NVIDIA, maybe it goes higher, but certainly it has entered an area that I think some swing traders would have wider stops. And when that's the case, you can get a little bit different price action. Uh, AMD did not provide you with that. So a lot of times I try to consider that counterparty. There was a question today, and I'm gonna leave you with the question today a lot. We, we got a lot of questions about Rivian on, on our live morning show and what happened to Rivian. There wasn't even any news. The range breakdown or the flat bottom break or the flat top breakout and whatever is good all comes down to one thing. Sometimes, when you have an obvious stop level, like if stock goes after earnings from $15, it breaks 15, stalls at 10, and then starts bouncing off 10. Now, human beings are lazy. I actually know somebody, and I found this out over the weekend, a good friend of mine, his dad, might have been the last person in history to have sold spot gold under 200 because when he was younger, he put a 199.99 stop on it. Uh, it then wicked that bottom, got him out, and it's ne it never traded under 200 cents. But what I'm, the reason I even mention that is because, well, obvious stop level, sometimes people just put a, if it breaks 10, I'm out. And when you have a level like this on Rivian, the reason I wasn't thinking long's net bounce was just because I want the short. 
Because all you really need in that situation is a bunch of people to have stops underneath 999, 995, 990, and it's just as simple as that. All they're gonna do is dump their position that they've been holding for a long time. And when it happens, you can get the floodgates breaking. Now, when you look at a 15 minute or a three minute chart here, you'd say, but why not short this level? But why not short this level? Because the counterparties at 10 for the breakdown are the simple or the more simple and lower hanging fruit. So sometimes if you want confluence in a trade, you're probably looking at $10 already. You're probably looking at shorting resistance or long support on chip stocks that fly around. You're already doing it. But zoom it out and put yourself in the mind of some of the other traders that are out there that could be swinging it, that might have it in their long term, and what are the things that they may or may not be doing which can make you like to trade more, or in the case of the NVIDIA trade, make me like it a little bit less. Every single observation you make in the market, you can learn from, but on top of that, you can use to adjust your strategy. So is this gonna have to be gospel for you? If it ain't for you, you ain't got a trade off of it. But before I enter a trade, I do try to consider other time, time frames and horizons that other traders are looking off of. And if they align with the trade I like, it gives me confluence. If they don't, it might give me the reason to look for something a little bit better. You're always trying to separate the good trades from the great trades, the good trades from the meh or blah trades. And every little bit is going to help. So consider that counterparty, not just who you're executing against right then and there when you buy or sell, but who is buying at that key level and what might they be thinking. That's your lesson of the day brought to you by Real Trading. Consider that counterparty. Thank you very much, Neil. Eloquent, informative, and awesome as always. What a hell of a trade on Rivian there. How many that was were those? Though the the ducks were feasting in the pond. <laughs> yeah, they were they were full. They were happy. They were uh, they were filled up to their heart's content. Guys, Apple is above 170. Uh, it's not clearing it with vigor, vigor, but it did make it up into that 170. Let's say in a fifth. Uh, 18 technically is HOD. It's trading above 170 right now. I'm gonna wait until there's a you know some sort of uh, a clear clue that this is a failed break through 170. If there isn't, then I miss the trade because I don't want to take Apple long. 170, which I look at as a key resistance level um, with no catalyst to really support the move. So if I miss the long, I miss the long. I'm going to be looking for a possible short here, but I need to see some sort of topping tail candle. Um, you know, remember when we were talking about those, uh, those candles that come into a key area of resistance that have large topping tails with small bodies. Those are typically uh, rejection candles. So Apple above 170, it's coming into HOD right now, 170.18, technically the high of the day on Apple. I'm going to keep eyes on that. A couple of other trades that I want to follow. The Katina man is short Coinbase at 260.33 or, or 260 uh, is somewhere around 20, excuse me, 260.20, essentially top wick because uh, the high of the day is 260.33. It's coming back down a bit of a V-shaped retracement right now as it comes back into that 257 and three quarters. Great trade there. We gave you the, uh, the 411 on why Coinbase was moving. Some of their derivative products in uh, for futures uh, for Bitcoin and Litecoin are now active on their system, and that was that precipitated uh, a two and two thirds percent move. Also, I want to mention a couple of things. R E N T finally breaking the volume weighted average price of the downside, but that's not before it gave you one hell of a trade that I missed. One seventy, sorry, oh God, I keep saying that. Seventeen fifty. If you put that. Resting order there, it did dip into that 1750 to defend VWAP. Then look at that move up to almost 20 bucks, 19, I think, uh, 98. Not the year, but the price. <laughs> at that, it bounced up. So great move there. Now it is giving up the ghost at the volume weighted average price, breaking down, and as well as $17 level uh, breaking down as well. So rent in some trouble. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't be able to apply that to MNDR. Look at this thing go, bro. $11 breakout there, 12 and a quarter now. It's trading at the spread is ridiculous on, the, on this thing. So be careful with it. And the range per candle is also quite wide. This is the IPO from yesterday, MNDR. It IPO'd yesterday, I think midday. Shout out to Amir Barak. 
for bringing me that one and the new one today. We had another IPO uh, that we mentioned earlier. ADIL as well as small cap gapper from yesterday. This bad boy started moving in the pre and then again in the aftermarket. It made a, a higher high in the aftermarket surprise there because there's no halt parameters. That's why after four o'clock. This one came into that $3.05, but it tanked. It broke below VWAP. But I got to tell you, one observation I'm making about ADIL is maybe my rule about trading it above VWAP is not valid because yesterday it spent a great deal of time below the volume at average price. And today it's doing the same thing where it spends a great deal of time below VWAP and then only to reclaim it later in the day. You saw that yesterday and you're seeing that again today on ADIL. So a bit of a different you know, twist to this small cap gapper here uh, that we may need to take account of. So a couple of things here moving midday, uh, not, to, not the least of which is Apple, which is now at high a day. 170.28, this thing is going, Katina, man. It is not stopping at that 170 $10 level. I really did believe that this was going to be a key area of resistance. Shows how much I know. Keep your eye on Apple. Yeah, I mean, the there Apple certainly want to keep an eye on Andre asking me for my thoughts on Amazon because I guess he's a big position in this one. This is a nice look. This is a, a really nice look on Amazon. Yeah, if you you had that long Amazon Express delivered that long uh, overnight <laughs> shipping here, uh, really nice look. Look at this. We have this pop up into this 187.40 right ahead of the open. Then we fall to the downside. Um. Then, but look at how clear the support is. We have higher highs, higher lows. Yes, but also. Low wick to the downside, buyers eating it up. Then another one, buyers eating it up. Clear resistance just to skosh here at this 186.60, pop back above. Yeah, a lot of really bamboozling candles here. But the point is, we keep pushing to the upside. Then we make that beautiful bull flag to the upside. Right now, it looks a little bit like how Nvidia looks. We're trying to consolidate potentially for another move up. Nice I like this flat top. I think this Amazon is a very nice look. So I um, hope that helps. Andre, um, yeah, I think I, I like You want to have a look at Coinbase because the Katina man said it was absolutely tanking. Let's do it. Ooh! Yeah, the light baby. bulb's on there. I mean, he's in that and then short there. So nice look. Oh. Coming into the 9 EMA. Bitcoin also helping Coinbase. Bitcoin's like, oh, Coinbase, you had a catalyst and now you're following? Let me help you. <laughs> so Co Bitcoin sending Coinbase a little bit to the downside here. So let's see how that one goes. Um, to add about 2.3, uh, 2.5% to the upside here, but not for long. Look at also all of these candles. Like these wicks are showing massive resistance up here, continuing to the downside. I saw that bearish engulfing, and I should have gotten involved when I saw that, but not my type of trade. You have to kind of stick to what type of trader you are. And the type of trader I am has been what we're talking about all week, actually. So this has been a fun uh -oh. week for me, and it's range trading, but today, psychology. That was a hell of a segue there, eh? All right, <laughs> I got you, I got you. All right, guys, we're talking about uh, range trading psychology. Thank you, Adara. So obviously, you guys know, range trading can be a mentally demanding uh, discipline. Unlike trending markets with constant action, ranges often experience periods of inactivity, right? Today, we'll explore the strategies to navigate these calm waters and develop a winning mindset, or at least we hope to do so. So let's talk a little bit about the challenge of range trading psychology. So the first one is that one that everybody talks about, boredom, right? The lack of constant excitement might tempt you to chase these unnecessary trades. I, I don't wanna speak for everybody, but a lot of people get into day trading for the excitement. I mean, like you like to see that move uh, midday, uh, you make it big on that one trade. I, I, again, you know, that's probably the novices mentality with respect to day trading, but you know, a lot of it are in it for the excitement part, but that's not how it always is, and that's not how it always pans out. Range trades, they lack that excitement. Maybe they excite you, actually, when they, I know Xera, Adara gets super excited, actually, I should say, when they come into her levels, right? Because it manifests what she believed. So, yeah, maybe it's not boring for everybody. Generally, though, it's considered. FOMO, also a big part of range trading or the psychology part of range trading because seeing others profit during trending markets can make you question your range trading strategy, right? Like, oh, all right, I'm sitting here trying to get a dollar on Microsoft between 420 and 421 and Neil and Sean are $20 in the money on something else. So it plays with your mind. It's gonna require a lot of discipline, especially if you're in a, on a trading floor where not everybody's trading your style. And you know, you could be out of the money or doing nothing and they could be up huge. You're gonna have to be able to disassociate yourself from that. A lot easier said than done. And over trading, right? 
um, the urge to make something happen during the more slower times in the range trade can lead to impulsive trades outside of your plan. You just heard Adara say um, the opposite of that perfectly. She's like, this is not my kind of trade. Um, despite the fact that she liked the look on Coinbase, I'm going to stick to my guns. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to say here uh, with respect to this overtrading um, headache. So shout out to Adara. What are some strategies, though, to help you compose yourself during your range trading journey? So embrace the patience. Again, a lot easier said than done, but accept the fact that range trading involves waiting for the right opportunities and try to focus on the discipline that's required and following your trading plan. You could use uh, checklists, for example, to help you uh, gauge whether or not you should be in a trade, right? Uh, I mean, I, you don't have to actually have a physical checklist, but a mental one will suffice, just like I do with my small cap gapper trading. Above pre-market high, definable pre-market high, trading above VWAP, right? Check, check, check. All right, now we can weasel our way into this trade, right? If I don't have the check marks, I'm not weaseling my way in. And stay engaged with the market. Develop a routine, right? To monitor the market during active trading hours, but avoid constant screen time. Pursue other interests during the calmer periods. The Katina man goes on his walk and talk. Neil, I don't, I'm not sure what he does, but he chills back there, right? So, you know, exact, the whole point is to, to clear your mind and, you know, put in the stops. If, you know, range trades are not momentum trades, so less likely your stop will get blown through, but it could happen, right? Especially if uh, Catalyst comes in midday, who knows? Focus on the process as well, very important. Instead of fixating on immediate profits, concentrate on executing your trading plan uh, irrespective of the profits to get those good reps in. Celebrate well-executed trades, even if the gains are small. And practice gratitude. This one is really important. My old man always tries to, uh, you know, punch this into me uh, big time. He's like, you need to practice gratitude. Be thankful for what you've got and don't always look, grass isn't always greener, right? Appreciate the low volatility and the, say that, yes, and absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the Chilean nightmare in my ear saying it's also really good for mental health. Couldn't agree more, Fabian. Um, appreciate the low volatility and the controlled risk environment that the range trading offers. And know your levels, guys. Thank you for adding this, Adair. If there is a stock with a range you like, make sure you have your eyes on the chart so you're aware when it falls into your area of interest. Once the range looks like it's ready, confirm your suspicions with the book or some candlestick patterns before getting it involved in the range. Sound advice. And how do you build this winning mindset, right? Especially when we're talking about something quite difficult to do, um, which is you know, to exercise discipline, wait for a trading plan, et cetera. Develop a realistic trading plan. So that's, I guess, the first step here. Set realistic profit targets and risk parameters that align with your risk tolerance and your trading style. And I, I want to say that I really believe that you know, your profit targets during your range trade are better defined than your profit targets during a momentum trade, especially in a blue sky setup. We know for a fact that there are no resistance levels in a blue sky setup, so we're gonna have to use technical indicators like relative strength or moving average converges divergence. But when you're in a range trade, like the one I was in on Microsoft yesterday, I knew that there was resistance at 421. I knew that there was support at 420, so those can make it easier for me to be like, all right, I'm taking profits here, rather than like, should I take profits here? So I like that part of it a little bit better. And then also, focus on consistency. Small, consistent gains add up, guys, over time. Aim for consistent execution rather than hitting home runs with every trade. It feels good to hit those big dingers. But is it really realistic to do that every single time? I'm going to go ahead and say no. Journaling. Remember when we had that week on journaling? We had Wainers. Uh, give us one of his journals, and I showed you guys exactly how he, he made that point form notes. The things he did well, he highlighted. The things he did poorly, he highlighted. The things that he wants to work on in the future, he, uh, he enunciated very, very clearly. So try to journal your thoughts and your feelings as well, because feelings, believe it or not, they're, they're going to be part of this. And visualizations, I didn't put this in, I'm sorry. Visualize yourself making successful trades within the range, reinforcing these positive behaviors that you wanna reinforce, right? Consider drawing the range 
Uh, you like on the chart, using horizontal lines, placing the line at sport <laughs> resistance levels. I didn't mean it that time, I promise. Okay. I actually didn't mean it this time. <laughs> so you laughing. can literally witness the trades coming into your levels and visualize the range. Remember, developing a winning psychology takes time and practice, guys. But here's some bonus tips. Engage with a supportive trading community. You have one in us right here. You have one with individuals in the chat. We're always engaging back and forth with you. But if you have some other friends that you're trading with, maybe you want to get back, uh, maybe you want to communicate with them. I know that when I was trading at home and I was watching the show, I had a couple of buddies who were trading, Alfred, chief among them, that I would you know, bounce ideas off, especially for swing trades, not so much for day trades. So try to develop a good trading community there and share your experience experiences as well as your challenges with like-minded individuals that will help boost your motivation and keep you on track. And it's great for uh, the give and take, the sympathy to have, you know, that, that ear that knows what you're talking about, knows what you're feeling, not just some random person that thinks you're a degen because uh, you're day trading. You see what I'm saying? So get yourself a good supportive community there and to see what you can get. Oh, dang it, Apple, it did reject 170 while I was dropping hot lines, and there it goes down. All right, so we'll see exactly what Apple does here. Does it hold up at the 10 EMA? Uh, and is this a fake out breakdown, or what the deal is? Eyes on Apple. Yeah, the hot lines you were dropping were so hot that Apple was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Um, I, I cannot outshine Sharif, so it sold off a little bit. That's no, all jokes aside, nice one there. Also, yeah, if you want to join this community, subscribe and hang out with us every single day. Um, also, you can join the chat, I believe, is the thing. If you're subscribed, you can hang out in the chat. So, And we really have a great chat community. Like, uh, everyone is so helpful, like people pointing out range to stay, like I had Kyle Burdett pointing out stuff to me. I had K-Debs pointing out that beautiful micron range. Um, and actually, with regards to that micron range, which I haven't been in because the range kind of broke, I do want to, um, to the upside, but I want to talk about this for a second. So with, what Sharif said with ranges is just being, you know, being happy with you, what you have, regardless of how large the trade is. So this is not a huge winner, but I was super proud of it because I had a plan and I stuck to it. Got in, and I'm honestly really happy with this entry here. We got in right at the bottom of this range, giving ourselves about 15 pennies of risk to that 124 area. And I chose that just because where we had these little wicks here to the downside when the range began. Um. Then I decided, we, we took about, I think, 30 pennies with most of this here. So about two to one risk to reward, not bad. So I'm pretty happy with this. You know what I mean? It's, it wasn't like the trade of the century, but it was a trade that I had a plan for and that I was able to execute accordingly. So I just wanted to touch on what Sharif had to say there because I think it is, sure. it's apt. And I, I think also too, another one with regards to trying not to have FOMO and just being happy you ex executed the trade, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is making new highs of the day, but I, I stuck with my range. And so I'm still happy with what I did here. I think we got about a buck 50 on, on the, the last part of this position. So. Pleased as a dang punch. But you sometimes you have to punch out regardless of how you're pleased. Cause like and with what Sharif was saying, which I totally agreed with, I think you really made me realize how much I, why I like range trading with what you were saying there. Cause you were saying with ranges, you have clear profit taking places. That's what I like. I yeah, like yeah. having to know, hey Adara, this is where you get out. A little less aggressive. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I, you like to have those those clear ideas, and that's why I love ranges. The Chilean nightmare says you like certainty. I do like certainty. There you go. And ranges give you that. Like I said, Dara, why are you taking high of day break NVIDIA? You're not going to want that break. Initially, I saved a piece of the dream, and I said, Dara, your dream is this range right here. Um, cue violin hallmark <laughs> music. But I liked what I was doing, so I said, get out at 891s. I did. Um, the same with this Tesla. Initially, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, oh, Tesla's going to have this big breakdown here at this curl. And I was like, it's probably not, Adara. Like, just, you know, hang out, chill out. So I took some profit here. Should have taken out everything there. I didn't. If we stay below this uh, resistance area of 172.70, I'm trying to stay calm, trying to stay chill. I like I'm going to stay in this trade. I'm actually going to add to this, though, because we rejected really nicely there. I like that. So we're adding to this. Um, we're going to be getting out of this as we get into that 172 range, I think, just to kind of cut everything out there. Because I'm noticing lower highs, higher lows. I think I initially got into this short, too, because if you look here, look at this five minute and all of these little candles here showing that we were seeing a little bit of resistance here at this 172.20, aligning with that previous area of resistance. So I liked it. Didn't end up coming totally to fruition, but I have no impetus to leave the short as of yet which is why I'm staying in. Also, this little green candle you see here, uh, green triangle, would it shock you to know this was a fat finger? Because it was. But that's okay. I got out, I added right <laughs> back in, and actually, I got a better average on it because I, I added it where I did, which is obviously 
maybe, you know, making, turning lemons into lemonade. Obviously, we should not be happy with the fat finger movement. But in that case, it did end up working out. So as Shreve said, being grateful for everything, that's my gratitude Dang. that I made an error in a trade. Um, hey, that's, that's so not bad. We're having a good time over here. Yeah, we are. Um, I want to shout out Trisha Perkins. Great call out, Trisha, calling out C-A-D-L. We're going to have to kick one of these bad boys off the side charts here. here. It's probably going to be E-L-Y-M-C-A-D-L. Uh, thank you for calling this out, Trisha. 47%. What is this, bro? Uh, just started moving midday. I didn't have eyes on this at all. Is it even showing up on my scanner? Why is CADL not showing up on my scanner? And Dell moves a lot. It's like a multi. I know, but it's not showing up on my scanner, which is really frustrating me at the moment. I should have eyes on this. Well, we've got orphan drug designation. Oh, there it is. I found it. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. just an idiot. Yeah. Uh, that's normal around here. Um, all right, CADL. Great look here. Let's uh, analyze this one a little bit more. Is there a, a catalyst, first and foremost? Yes, there is. Okay. So... Cattle Therapeutic receives FDA orf orphan drug designation. I don't know what an orphan drug is. I'm dumb. Uh, for CAN249 for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. I'm assuming orphan means like a single. No, it's for pancreatic cancer, uh, Chile nightmare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, was, he thought it was for something else. Anyway, great look there. I love to see stuff for cancer. Uh, I, I know these noble cause... The Katina man says an orphan drug is a drug for a rare disease or condition. Thank you very much, Katina man, for that. Uh, so that's what it is there. Uh, and it's popping off big boy here. So this one really getting off uh, the schneid, as Neil likes to say, right at 9 a.m. It looks like that headline did actually drop right at 9. The algos were all over that because it got bought up aggressively off that 510 close yesterday. And in two five-minute candles, we popped up to 680. But we did break down below VWAP. Right? And then the bamboozlement came in fast and furious. Why? Because we broke the pre market high at the bell. And then we went br immediately to tank, breaking down and uh, breaking down the whole dollar level as well as breaking down below VWAP. But steadily, we started gaining here a little bit with uh, the reclaim of VWAP coming in at around 11.45 and moving up nicely here. So now, how do we get into this trade? Personally, I need a dip trade on a strong name. I like this uh, at around $7 to $7.10, owing to these two areas of resistance earlier. So it's trading at seven and a third right now. If it comes into seven, I'm definitely gonna be interested in this. Shout out to Trisha Perkins for pointing this out. I didn't have eyes on it. And now it is gonna go on to a trade screen so that we can, uh, get, uh, we can get ready for this trade if and when it comes into that $7 $7.05 level. The other thing I wanted to mention super quick here was AAPL. I had a look. This this could this is this is my problem now. This is no nobody else's problem but mine. I figured this seven and, and a quarter, seven, 170 and a quarter, 170 and a third move by Apple um, was essentially a fake breakout. And so what I did was I let it retrace and then I said, okay. It's popping right back again off this big retracement here. Uh, I'm going to go short if it makes a new low below this five-minute candle. So I put a short. Uh, it's resting short right now. It's already active for a 169.82 break. Okay? So if this one holds above 70, uh, 170, obviously I won't get filled. But if this one breaks below this dip over here, I want all the smoke. And then we'll, uh, we'll have to figure out where our out would be because I'm not going to give it to 170.29. That's for dang sure. So keeping eyes on that. And then the monster, AKA NVIDIA, continues to print HODs. It's on its way to 895, probably on its way to 900 sometime in the day. This thing's a monster. I'm sorry, are you short? NVIDIA? I was, oh, oh, right. I was long yeah, NVIDIA okay. um, into the breakout and then I was like, girl, you can't do that with your life. I, <laughs> I was like, I got it to, I think high day at the time was 891.25, so I got to 891s. I said, for a range person, this is more acceptable. Right. Also, I do want to talk about this Tesla because I am aware, I am intimately aware of how this looks like it's breaking higher. Like I said, I got in because initially we did have that curl and then I had no reason to leave until we break above this previous area of resistance and it looks like as I'm speaking, Tesla might try to, to make a fool out of me. So thank you, Tesla. Much appreciated. Uh, we call it stressful for a reason, right? Right. There we go. But anyways, all jokes aside, I'm staying in this short for the time being. The plan is to get it at 172s, then go long from there because I, I'm seeing we're having this kind of curl back up. This is, a bit, it ended up being a bit of a counter trend move and I say ended up because 
these these little wicks here, especially at that previous area of resistance around 172.20, did to me really look like a bullish or bearish reversal, which is why I was trying to play it into this previous area of resistance. Should have gotten everything out there. That's what I should have done. But that's all right. This, I didn't do it. And I still don't have a reason to leave this trade unless we break above this area. So staying calm, staying zen, staying until 172, then switching long potentially at 172, breathing, staying chill, and eating what the market has to give us here. Also, shout out to Ahmed Al Wallace. Sorry, it's a bit of a, a late look on my part, but um, shouting out this um, Reddit saying, thank you for the super chat, 729 AED. Thanks to Reddit out at 4550. Let's take Ooh. a look at Reddit and see, um, see what Reddit gave you there. Do -do -do. Oh, this is a nice one. Okay, 4550 AU. Congrats to you there, Ahmed. This is just a, a classic dip buy scenario here. Reddit just kind of coming into this 90 MA and giving you opportunities. Is there a catalyst on this guy? No, it's just doing Reddit things. <laughs> but nice look here on RDDT. It looks like we are kind of, it looks like you got out of a good area too because you said 4550s, so that would have been around here. Oh, getting outvoted, says, upvoted, sorry, I can't up hear. Upvoted, okay. Um, says Fabian on that. That's a good, that's a good Reddit <laughs> joke there. Yeah, right now it looks like we could be getting a bit of a downvote off that 46 area, but yeah, Fabian killing it with the punch. Oh yeah, Fabian, uh, he's been killing it lately too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Fabian. Maybe he has his own crypto segment from now. We don't even really know. Right? I mean, I, I do crypto update. I would give over my, <laughs> I would give up the chair. If, if I just Fabian don't think he has enough time. Anybody no, who's I'm seen joking. Fabian yeah. work, like when Ram Ram is here, he's already busy. And now he's all alone. Can you imagine? I love the Shout baby out to the in the chill AW. Of course. He's just like reminding us he is here and he is. Yeah. Here. Ram Ram is hesitant to put it on. Fabian's all about that life. Shout out to Fabian. Go, Fabian. Um, I, yeah, I'm a little upset with this uh, dip trade over here. I didn't get triggered, I was one penny off. But look, it didn't bounce up uh, all that aggressively. I'm gonna leave the trade on CADL dip trade to defend seven. It did come into that level. Again, I was a penny off and now we're at the quarter dollar again. So we would have been 20 pennies in the money, 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 money on this one. But maybe it comes in for a better for a better dip. We'll wait and see there. So CADL dip trade set up at seven to defend that $7 level. It's not the whole dollar that I'm looking at. It's these two key areas of resistance that we put in earlier, I'm looking for that area to flip to support. AAPL is doing the dance with no pants at 170. I have a short setup for the break of this area right here. If it makes a new five minute candle to make a new low below that 169.82, I will get short, the, sh the, the order is already there. Sorry, I'm just looking at the side chart here. NVDA, oh my God, 896.20 now on NVIDIA. It's coming into 700, guys. Uh, sorry, uh, 700, yeah. Try to like, uh, try, that's a few months ago. Uh, 900, excuse me, on NVDA. And I do have resistance level two on pivots at 899. So keep your eye on NVDA here. Possible short off 900. You're not gonna see me trade NVIDIA. I will likely trade NVDL if I want to short NVDA. Uh, for that 900 level. So we'll keep eyes on that. What else we got? Do we have anything else uh, moving out and about over here? Cattles. Dang it, I'm really upset about that, man. Seven, 707 it came. I was sitting at 705, 707. All right, that's just the way trading is, baby. Um, I see a lot of people in the chat talking about HYMC. I see you guys. Another good look, 25% of the good was a lot higher at the highs there at 457. It is coming in to the volume weighted average price, an often good area to get these small cap gappers uh, as a dip trade, a retracement trade, um, VWAP on my charts at 420, 418, thereabouts. So keep eyes on HYMC, another small cap gapper du jour there. Yeah, I mean, that's a small cap, so many small cap gappers. So many. I have, actually have a question for you. Oh. Have you noticed, um, is there like a certain type of small cap that is more likely to have those multi-day runs? Like does that Very float, good. do you think, Last or like type chance. of company? You notice a lot of them are pharmaceutical related. Mm. I'm just curious. Uh, I don't know the answer to that uh, offhand, but I do know that the ones with better catalysts seem to get more attention. The ones with more substantive Catalyst. Reasons to Yeah, run. that's a great question. I haven't actually done the research, so whatever I'm saying is just kind of off the cuff at the moment. So well, that, uh, I just figured because I know you see a lot of them. I was like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very curious. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, all right, so that's basically what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Apple for a 169.82 breakdown. I'm looking for CADL to dip into 170, uh, sorry, into $7, but that's going away for me. I think the trade's already been had here. I'm canceling this order. That's no longer valid. The dip trade has been had, and it's at 7.5 now, so a little bit disappointed in myself for uh, missing that, but you know, what can you do, right? If I, if I don't choose 705, I choose 710, then I'll be mad at myself for choosing 710, then getting stopped out 685. So it's a lose-lose situation when you do this to yourself. Uh, keeping an eyes on, eye on HYMC, because it just dipped in to 420. Now let, looking to defend that level at four and a quarter. Let's see if this one can hold up at VU up Adair. Yeah, I mean, speaking of holding up, Tesla, I did get out of Tesla. This might have been a bit too early. I saw that break above 770. Two seventies, sorry, seven one seventy two seventy. You were saying Nvidia seven hundred. Now I'm saying Tesla seven hundred. <laughs> going on, yeah. yeah Nvidia, uh, Tesla one seventy two seventy. This is a level for whatever reason. This is a level. I should have been more patient. I got out because I saw we got to one seventy two seventy five, but we didn't do it with with that intensity that I was looking for. But I, I kind of got out, got a little skirt, I guess, and got out. If Tesla keeps failing one seventy two seventy, I'm getting back involved in this short because Tesla and this level are not best left. They're not besties. They're not getting along very well. Um, look, we're, we're, Sarah, patience, girl. It's okay. We learn. Every trade, you're gonna learn a little bit there. I still stand by what I was trying to do here. Um, and maybe I got out a little bit early, but we're gonna have to wait and see. I stuck to the plan, which was see what we do at 172. Not even 172, 172, 70. Sorry, my brain. Turned off there for just a moment, good times. But also, I want to shout out Pillsbury because I, I saw this earlier and I forgot to mention it. Thank you for bringing this one up, saying that you're playing the meta range to the short side. This is gorgeous. I like, too, that you're playing it to the short side because it's down on the day. So that's the type of trade I'd probably be more comfortable with, too, right? Taking this range to the downside from this clear resistance. And I mean, this range is gorgeous. You have that resistance area at 520.50 support at, oh, this is like a $3 almost, 517.50. So, and you have the little built-in profit takers on the way. So shout out to you. Hope you're still killing it with this trade. This is something I need to be getting involved in that I kind of missed out on. NVIDIA, Sharif was talking about um, NVIDIA and that 700, I said it again, 900 level. And yeah, I mean, look at this. We're getting, it's not bearish and golfing here, uh, but it's pretty darn close. We're having this kind of move down here from this 895. This is not something I'm shorting. To me, this is like um, not not really my, my cup of soup, not really my bag. Oh, let me look at AMD. Thank you, Sean saying he chose AMD. AM dancing with AM danger over here. Um, oh yeah, I like this look better. I love this game. Are you short? 169.07? Really? I'm so proud. Okay, so I guess 169.07, Sean is short 169.05. That might be the closest I've been on this game, so I'm, I'm pleased as punch. But yeah, so this is nice, like literally taking it off of this kind of wick up here. I want to, I'm putting AMD goes on my side chart, and you know what should go in everybody's charts all the time and on your YouTube is more Trader TV Live, which you can check out right here. Um, that is the channel where you can see Sean and Neil's trades all the time. Also, shout out to Frank Jones. Frank Jones, the one and only. Mike Jones. Saying in the chat that um, apparently Austin Goolsby to speak soon at 1245. I haven't seen any notes on that yet, but if he says anything of note, we will let you go. Oh, I'll uh, let you know. We're not letting you go yet. Not for another. No, Somebody no, needs no. more coffee. And Oof. do not forget, we have the 30-year uh, note auction coming out in exactly 13 minutes. We got a big move yesterday off that 10-year note, so eyes on that. And yes, Bostic apparently is supposed to drop hot lines at 130. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Katina man like that one. I know, um, I, know, I know another Fed speaker. I think what Neil said today was absolutely brilliant. What if these Fed, Fed speakers only spoke outside regular market hours? They don't care about the markets, but I, I kind of don't believe that. I think they have one eye on the market and the other eye on their bank account. But probably not here or there. Anyway, uh, Fed Bostic speaking at 1.30. We shall give you updates on that anytime it comes in. Okay, so Fed Collins has said a whole bunch of different things here. Um, seems like, you know, that's about an hour. No. All right, so there's some stuff here. Fed Collins says short-term inflation expectations now consistent with a 2% inflation goal, that seems to be quite bullish to me. 
Um, also says, Fed Collins says, too early to make sense of recent rise in productivity, all right. Um, President CEO says, economic uncertainty is elevated, wage growth consistent with path to 2% inflation. Okay, so that's just basically repeating what you said prior to that. Okay, so I'm gonna put in Bostic here, B-O-S-T-I-C. Uh, so when he starts speaking, I'll get those headlines uh, first thing. All right, HYMC. Uh, I'm gonna go long HYMC here with a stop below 410. Let's go long. Long 424, let's see what we get on that. CADL, still doing things above seven, didn't come back into my area. Uh, what's Apple doing? Nope, Apple doesn't look like it's gonna break 170, at least for now. I'm gonna leave my dip, my uh, short below 169.82 in place because it's not like we're making new highs on Apple, not, at least not yet. So I'm gonna leave that order in place for that 169.82 break and take. Nice. I am, um, hopefully it breaks and it takes. i will be great. Right? Please as punch. <laughs> but yeah, so also, I'm not pleased as punch as myself. I did not have enough discipline getting out of Tesla where I did. I said I was going to wait for that 172.70 break with the viciousness. We didn't really have a viciousness. We kind of had a... Up into that 172... Um, 75 and I got out and it was like I still think this is valid we are still rejecting so I got back in the short potentially a little bit late we could still be bouncing off this 90 MA but I mean look at how long we fought with tooth, tooth and nail here for that 172 70 and Tesla did not want to give it so I do think there's something there's some kind of resistance at this level that I want to get involved in I have a rip buy here as well, set at 172.50, just add to the position suite in the pot, just a skosh. And we're gonna be trying to get out once, like I said again, see what we do with this 172. Happy I got back in. This is the type of stuff I need to be doing more often. Um, I should have stuck with the idea in the first place, but you know what? If you fail once, you try Bruh. again. I think I, I don't know where we, we, it's like I lost my train of thought halfway through what I was saying there, but it's all good. The train of Tesla's thought is right now to the downwind side. Oh, sorry, yes. The, the short on Apple is gone. There it is. No, I mean, I'm not, I didn't take it, but there we go. New high of day on Apple, 170.44. It's up now 1.5%. It's reclaiming that 170 level now. We're almost 50 pennies north of that key $10 level, if you believe in that kind of stuff, and I do. But, yeah, today, it's Apple's day, with, despite the fact that there are no good catalysts. Uh, let's be honest about it, right? They were two negative-ish catalysts, one about a hack, and the other about um, JP Morgan dropping the price target five bucks. And just as I was singing its praise with a 170.44 HOD, it tanks into 170.10. Okay, so maybe the, the short is in play on Apple. The bamboozlement is real. Um, yeah, and that's just the way trading is. So it's not always gonna go your way. Thankfully, we didn't get cut up on this. We'll keep eyes on it. Let's see the trade we're actually in right now, which is HYMC doing bupkiss at the volume weighted average price, keeping an eye on this one. Stop is already in place for HYMC. What else we got here in the chat? Finally moving up, Apple, uh, says Joe Schmo. Shout out to Joe. Can't wait for functional AI Siri. How bad is Siri, dude? Siri is horrible and has been horrible for a long time. Anytime you use Google versus Siri, it is not even a competition. Uh, Google is just far better at providing you with results, and I have to go into the Google app to actually use that voice command. I find myself now actually just using AI, right? I'll just go into the ChatGPT app and just speak into it. It's so much oh, better than Siri. Darwin, what? sorry, Darwin just put something in the chat. What, what, what? Apple plans to revamp entire Mac line with AI-focused M4 chips, Apple's it. first wave of M4 Mac chips to debut in, oh, sorry. There uh, it is, yeah. Yeah, there Bang, it is. I didn't see it. Thank I didn't you see for it that. Either. I didn't see it. Thank you, Darwin. Well, he has the connection because he he is Darwin AI. He, know, he's on. Darwin OG. That's hey, true. He, yeah. He's one of the OGs in the chat. Shout out to Darwin Two Pamps. Uh, he knows exactly what I'm talking about there. Um, but yeah, there it is, guys. Apple plans to revamp with the M4. Uh, I guess the next wave of chips are going to be AI specific chips. We saw Intel yesterday with their Gaudi 3. They're focusing on making AI specific CPUs. It's all been about the GPU so far, the graphic processing unit, and everybody's forgotten about the central processing unit. So we'll see whether that can uh, feature in again. But thank you, Darwin, uh, for that. Appreciate it. Um, Benny S says it's all about Google Gemini advanced bra do better 
Look, man, I don't mind Google Gemini. Ask Adira, I use it all the time. He does. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. I've got no, no issues with it, but the fact of the matter, I got an iPhone. I don't have an Android, so Apple needs to do better with Siri, man. Siri is like ancient when you compare it to some of the competitors. It really does suck. It really does suck. I'm not Let's be right. and I'm, a, I'm a Apple shareholder. I'm telling you that flat out. What do you got? Yeah, so someone was saying, oh, seriously, you're shorting Tesla again. I mean, yeah, I am because we're still failing 170, 270. Um, so I'm happy with this. I honestly really pleased this punch with this trade right now. Um, because Tesla, the more you fail 170, 270, I'm only going to want to short you more. Just so you know, Tesla. I'm talking to you, Tesla. <laughs> Tesla, I'm talking to you. you so that's that why stuff. I got back involved. I know it's a little counter trend, but also it's not really because we keep failing 172.70, and I have a clear plan for it. We're taking 172s. Tesla, get down there to the downside. Mm. So yeah, I just wanted to address why I was shorting this mm. um, because I did see some questions about that in the chat, which I understand. I know it's a little counter trend, but I mean, if Tesla's gonna reject this level so clearly, I also I have to admit a bit of this is a revenge trade for myself. A revenge trade. I want to clarify. We're not John Wick over here. We're like more like, you know, a therapist coming to be like, Tesla, tell me about your problems. Let me hold your hand. You know, like, well, who hurt you? Right now, this 172.70 level hurt Tesla, so we're going to work together with TSLA Aww, to Tesla. go to the downside. Also, just so, um, thank you, some people mentioning this in the chat again, 30-year auction yes. coming at one. Yes. Hopefully, we're going to be at a Tesla by that point. Honestly, she's about 20 pennies away, so maybe okay. we will be. Got a little bit excited there. But yes, um, TSLA going to the downside. Also, I'm trying to go long Coinbase. I want to explain why. I have my um, Binance up coin right now, uh, Bitcoin, trying to push above into this 70, just above the 70,000 level. I have a dip buy just below 257s. I like this little push we had up here. Push. I do think Mother Bitcoin is on her side. <laughs> but also, Adara, where's the range in this? You know what? I'm going to cancel this order because I don't have a clear out. There you go. Change my plan. Um, Tesla, though, keeping, keeping it on. I'm so happy with this. I am, like I said, I'm a little bit upset at myself for getting out of this earlier at this 172.70 because I was like, oh, we're breaking above. But it was like we broke up like two pennies with no viciousness. No. I want the viciousness. Where is the viciousness? Right now, the viciousness is to the downside. So shout out to Tesla <laughs> giving me everything I want for Christmas. Um, it's not Christmas. <laughs> but yeah, good times. Tesla um, seeing a little bit of support here, so we're going to get out of this a little bit earlier at 20s. I'll still be pleased with Punch. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just in a good mood over here. I like it. Um, good, good. Thank you. I appreciate that. We were, we were calling uh, the Katina man Good Vibes Katina he yesterday. It is Good Vibes Katina. Uh, it's going to be Good Vibes. Oh, well, I can't say Good Vibes Adara because uh, number one, it's repetitive. Number two, it doesn't rhyme. It doesn't have the same uh, flow. Cadence. You know what I mean? Yeah, we need cadence, exactly. Uh, long CADL at seven, looking for the seven defend here. We'll see what we get on this one. Long, two small cap gappers, uh, both flat, essentially really nothing doing at key areas of support. Stops already in place. Gonna give these ones a little bit of room, but the bamboozlement is real on these small cap gappers. Let's be real about it, okay? So the bottom could drop off at any time. They are not large caps. You cannot rely on them being around for a long time. They're around for a good time, not a long time, most of these bad boys, okay? So keep that in mind, long CADL at 7.05. Um, I had other stuff to mention. Yeah, Neil put something in the chat, he made me chuckle. I have noticed my Google Home has been getting shady recently too. He doesn't really describe what shady means, but we can all kind of infer the listening aspect of it. And I was talking to Brendan. No, it's not that? Okay, go for it, Neil. Neil's gonna drop hot lines. He's coming in hot. It is now. We're good? So the observation, um, the observation that I made is like my Google Home we'd use it. My, my daughter absolutely loves it when she doesn't understand a question or she wants to know a fact. But recently we've been getting a lot of I don't understand the question or it just comes back with a with a nonsensical answer. And my theory would be tinfoil hat, and it probably makes sense with Siri, and I see Darwin talk about this uh, with his with Amazon, is if we're about to get every single one of these products, a generative AI update to them in the near future, why in the heck would they bother keeping these high, higher quality or improving them? Because I'm about to get, there's going to be a Google Home powered by Gemini and, and, and down the line. Those are all happening. It's, how is it any different from Apple, from your iPhone having poor battery life before the next release? It's the same thing. So why wouldn't that be true? I know it's a bit tinfoil hat, but it no, makes logical sense to me. it's not tinfoil hat at all, Neil. You're bang on with that because there, there are layoffs 
in the machine learning aspects. Uh, remember what Amazon did? They laid off all those Alexa people. You're bang on with that. There's nothing tinfoil about that. I think you're bang on. I, I well, you know, it's it's unfortunate because I love the product, and we use my daughter loves Google Google Home. The new world is. If you want to get information, learning how to ask the right question and get information out of AI or out of search is how kids do things. So at a young age, it's like if she if I don't know the answer to something, I go try asking Google Home. And if she gets if she asks the question incorrectly, I let her figure out um, what's the question she she should ask. And sometimes I'll have to help her out with it. But hey, that's the new norm, man. I mean, it, it's not like us. We're not going to a library and thumbing through. Um, the index cards to go pick out the right book and then having to read all that nonsense or the Coles notes. It's just a new world. And these products are probably going to stink for a bit and then we're all going to pay for what is better down the line. And I'm saying all this and then I'm going to be the first person to buy the Gemini-powered whatever product they give me. It's just how it is. Thank you very much. I, I, I agree with everything he, he just said. And I don't typically agree with him all that much. But yeah, Neil, I, I, I agree 100% with that. I think that we're going to see a whole different type of, uh, you know, that kind of uh, human assistance programs or whatever. Um, I wanted to make a, a very good, I want to suggest something to you guys. So recently I've been listening to the Lex Friedman podcast and he had this guy on. I'll give you his exact name here. Um, one moment. Yes, Jan Lucan. I don't know, I, uh, hopefully I'm not butchering his name, Y-A-L-L, -L. it's number 416. And basically this guy, he's a big AI guy with Meta, and this guy feels that LLMs are a fad, that AI is not gonna be based upon these large language models because they fail to be able to do the simple human things like um, you know, just be able to learn a workout by observing, to be able to do things that humans do on a, such a rudimentary level, Yet, they excel, amazing, better than humans at higher level, uh, you know, things like do, writing the bar exam, the medical licensing exam, they, they score better than humans, mostly on that kind of stuff. So low end things they can't do, high end things they can do. So he says that there, there's no way to augment the LLM to actually be able to make, or make it do these low level human tasks. So we're gonna have to see if there's gonna be a new, uh, a new type of non-LLM AI that comes out. We'll have to wait and see. A lot of people think that it's gonna be AGI. Well, I don't know. Uh, wet my beak here on um, a little uh, profit taker on CADL as it did hold seven. It did put in a nice uh, bottoming tail candle, but I'm not entirely convinced that this holds seven. The volume weighted average price on CADL is about six and three quarters. So if it tanks below seven, I'll be looking to, re, uh, to get back in at around six and Six and three quarter. The Katina man says Coinbase is tanking. There, it, I see it. It's breaking down big. It's coming into that 255. You want to cover it? Yeah. Yeah, because we did. Uh, we had the auction. Yeah, I'm so happy I did. I canceled that. Um, that dip buying coin. Like, whew, Please just punch. Please just yes, punch. So I was like, Adara, when you get that auction, you're not gonna want to be there. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Day Trader Cop, for So 30 year auction. We're just waiting for that number to come in. Oh, thank you. Okay, sorry. They just put it in the chat. Thank you, Day Trader Cop. Cut. <laughs> All good. Um, high yield actual 4.671 percent. Previous 4.331 percent. So coming in higher than the previous here. Okay. Setting this market a little bit to the downside, except mm. not if you're Tesla. Tesla's chilling. Tesla popped right back up here. Um, do your thing, Tesla. Uh, so I didn't say that too because a lot of these other Meg 7 names, bit of a move to the downside. Spy had a move to the downside. I took a mini long and then was like, Adara, what are you doing? The auction's coming out. Get out of that thing. So I did get out of that thing. Really small position. We didn't. It was all good. Um, what we lost on that was probably less than like a Tim Hortons cookie. So I was okay with that. Um, which <laughs> maybe says more about the size of the position than anything else, but it was pretty small position. But yeah, so Q is getting a bit of a pop up here again. So this, shrugging off the auction a bit here in a way that we didn't yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, that bond reaction, I think, lasted a little bit longer. Well, sometimes we takes a few more minutes. Remember, like we've seen That's it true, at yeah. five after the hour, get a little, you know, uh, wicky and volatile. So we're, we'll watch. I mean, we didn't get, yeah, like you said, Adair, we didn't get much of a move there. We're still above 18.3 though, guys. So that fight between buyers and sellers at 18.3 on the NQ June contract, 
Well, we're still at 18.305 right now, so we'll have to wait and see exactly what pops off there. But I'm looking at still at CADL here. This one popped off into $7.30. We're long, 7.05. I'm looking to wet my beak maybe here at seven and a third. That's about three pennies, a bit higher than where it topped off to there. Um, HYMC broke below the volume weighted average price, but it was a wick, not on a closing basis. I have my stop one penny below that low. I had it at 414. It came down to 415. If it triggers 414 on the bid, uh, or excuse me, on the ask, I'll be out of that one. We'll keep eyes on that. CADL still doing things. Apple is on the way to 171. What the hell is Apple doing today? Uh, very strong. Again, we know about their new AI-focused M4 chips, this and that and the other. But I figured, you know, that this was, would be priced in. That you're not going to get computers. They're not going to be AI compliant. Isn't that just logical? Uh, any new computers are going to have to have some sort of AI meshed in with them. So I guess the market was waiting for confirmation on that. Up and to the right goes Apple, one and two thirds percent on the day now. One of the stronger names. And there goes the futures to the high side. So that bond auction just got absorbed. 18,350 incoming here Ooh. on the future. Big, big move up here, Adira. Yeah, I mean, big move up indeed. I was trying to take advantage of that with NVIDIA. I need to be more decisive. I wanted to punch in here, 894. Um, 50s. If I had, we would be two bucks in the money, 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 and we'd also be out of the trade because that was the previous hive day. But alas, neither came true, and that's why I need to be more decisive. It's like, Adara, you like a level? Do it. Stick the landing. And also, that was why I was proud of myself for getting back in this Tesla short. I got out. I spooked myself and got out. Also, Tesla, if you're going to fail, um, oh, look at these indexes. Oh, yeah, I know the Chilean nightmare was saying wow because of that. Yeah. Was looking right at that. Yeah. Oof. But yeah, so now Tesla might actually be breaking above, bless you, that 172.70. But Tesla, if we just had to move up and you still can't break above your previous level of resistance. Oh, as I say it, Tesla's like, Adara, what are you talking about? I just broke 172.70, Adara. Shh. So yeah, so Tesla now trying to break above this level. But as I say, now it pops back down again. Tesla, you and this level are kind of a messla. But I'll keep playing that short. If it's gonna keep giving me that keep short. Doing it as long as it's right? working. Right? Rinse and repeat. Yeah. That's what I like yeah. about range trading. Fabian was saying I like the certainty. Mm -hmm. I agree. Also, speaking of range trading, we should probably do that lesson wow. again. Yeah. Um, so if there are anything, shout and we will interrupt the lesson because I'm sure this market will be giving us opportunities. But shout. for now, shout. let me open up all these are the things I can do without. Come, Come on. on. Oh boy. I'm That's 80s song. You. That's like 20 years Come before on. you were born. You realize it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, even, Adara punches outside her weight class. Thank That's you. what it is. Well, even I was at someone's house a um, couple weeks ago. We were all singing Tainted Love, um, that old <laughs> 80s song. And so half of us were singing it, and the other half were like, what are you guys doing? How do you know the song? Yeah. Yeah, because the girl who was surprised. hosting, she had an 80s playlist. And I was like, yes. And so she and I were singing, <laughs> and everyone else was like, what is happening right oh now? Oh, my God. So it was good, <laughs> good time. Uh, Adara, just before you start the lesson, Arm is absolutely flying to the high side here. I see you guys, Trader Forever. I see you guys mentioning ARM. ARM is on the way to 131. Big move up for ARM today, 4.5% for ARM. Let me just bring in the side chart real quick. Sorry to interrupt you, Adara, but I want to mention ARM for the people. Here it is. We're at high a day right now on ARM as this one is coming into that 131 area. Uh, keep in mind that there was a catalyst today, including ARM. I forget exactly who it was, but it was somebody that wanted to use the ARM um, infrastructure on their CPUs. It's, it's evading me at the moment, but I'm sure uh, I'll, I'll be able to remind myself of that once we're done the lesson. Yes, and right as we get into the lesson too, I, I just saw this really apt quote from Michael Moore biting in the chat. Welcome to the market where good news is bad news, bad news is good news, good news is good news, and bad news is bad news. So shout out to you, kind of summarizing the entire market in one yeah. short under 200 word comment on YouTube, or under 200 character comment on YouTube. So um, I enjoyed that. Let's get into for now though, the lesson du jour, it which is. is conquering raid trading psychology, something I'm definitely trying to work on as someone who likes range trading. So range trading psychology is a little bit interesting because it requires a kind of patience and discipline not always present. Um, and the frequent inactivity can lead to boredom. You get kind of bored because you're waiting for your trade. Also, shout out to Sharif just pumping it there. Um, 
We, uh, because you don't have a lot of excitement in range trading sometimes. I kind of like it because I like the certainty, but certainly there are some traders. It's not going to be about that life. You want to have that constant movement. The bangers, all of those exciting trades. So it can tempt you to potentially chase unnecessary trades, and that I have experienced. Um, FOMO also can be hard, fear of missing out. You can see others profit in these trending markets and then question your range trading strategy. You know, you're like, what am I doing here? What's going on? Everybody else is making money and I'm waiting for Tesla to hit a level. You know what I mean? So it is certainly a pretty common feeling. Also though, over trading, another thing to keep an eye on. You have this urge to make something happen, to get involved in a trade. You see everybody else trading. You want to be where the people are. And then this ends up leading to impulsive trades outside of your plan. Also, uh, we're talking about strategies for composed trading. You want to embrace the patience, right? Accept that range trading involves waiting for the right opportunities and focus on discipline and following your trading plan. You might also want to consider using checklists to ensure you stick to your strategy. With that in mind, you want to stay engaged as well, right? Develop a routine for monitoring the market during active trading hours, but avoid constant screen time and pursue other interests during calmer periods. Focus on the process too. Instead of, and this is one thing I'm trying to work on for sure, and I, I would like to chat about if I may, instead of fixating on immediate profits, concentrate on executing your trading plan flawlessly. And let me tell you, that will help you feel better about patience because when you have that plan going perfectly, it's all that matters. You're just pleased as punch. And I think that's really important. That's something I do want to talk about. And that's why I think when you focus on the process, you can be a little bit more happy with being patient because you know when it works, it works. Practicing gratitude, really important too. I really appreciate Sharif for putting this into the lesson today. And you just want to focus, instead of on immediate pro, um, process, you want to focus, um, instead of immediate profit, sorry, you want to concentrate on executing your trading plan flawlessly and celebrating well-executed trades, even if the gains are small. I think I read the wrong thing there, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, I appreciate the low volatility that comes with gratitude with, with we need more coffee with trading in ranges and just enjoy the controlled risk environment that range trading offers. Also enjoy coffee if you're if you're kind of living your life or over I think here. Doing the meeting. You also want to know your levels. If there's a stock with the range you like, make sure that you have your eyes on the chart or draw a lot of lines as Sharif was roasting me about earlier to make sure that you know when it falls into your area of interest, you're ready to strike and punch in. Confirm your suspicions while watching the book and checking your ranges and how the chart's going before right. you enter. How do you build, though, a winning mindset? First, develop a realistic trading plan. Set realistic profit targets and risk parameters that align with your risk tolerance and trading styles. You also want to focus on consistency. Small, consistent gains which add up over time and aim for consistent execution rather than hitting home runs with every trade. That's, like I said, that's, to me, that's the sweet spot of range trading. That's what I'm always proud of. I got long and didn't near the high of day break, but I just took it to previous high of day, and I was happy with that because that was my plan. There you go. Um, journaling, also really important here. Track your trades, including your emotions, to identify patterns and areas for improvement. And also, uh, you want to visualize, right? Make sure that you see yourself making these successful trades within the range and reinforce positive behaviors. Also considering drawing the range you like on the chart, as Sharif was saying with the, those lines, and uh, so you can literally witness the trade coming into your levels and see the range on the, on the chart. Bonus tips here, engage with the supportive trading community and you know what, you've got one right here. You might wanna hit that like and subscribe so you can hang out with us every day. Uh, which <laughs> we, have a, we really enjoy and appreciate. Is that what you were saying to me earlier, Fabian? Yeah. My bad. Also, now I know. <laughs> yeah. Also, part of being in a great um, trading community like this, we're having friends like Alfred. Sharif has three-piece suit Alfred over here as well. Um, and when you have your trading friends, you can share experiences and challenges with people who understand yeah. you. And help can boost your motivation and keep you on track. And as someone who's our, who is trying to practice range trading, I think this is really important. Also, I want to shout out this comment from Joanna Brewster. I said, I said, um, I want to be where the people are. She was saying, is Adara making a Cheers reference? Cheers is like where everybody knows your name, right? So I was not making a Cheers reference. I was actually referencing part of your world from The Little Mermaid, which is probably oh. a good one to reference, but there you go. Interesting. They're both older, yeah. one's an older 90s, movie, one's yeah. an older show, right? Yeah. Little Mermaid is early 90s, right? Early, I think 91 or something. Yeah, yeah, because I remember watching that super early. Wet my beak there on some profits on AAPL as this monster is uninterrupted to the high side. Watch it tank now because I gave it 
Uh, I shouted it out, but Apple Fabian, nice move up there into the 171 and a quarter, 171 and a fifth level on Apple, up now over 2%, guys. Great look here on AAPL. This other trade that I had here on CADL, what a rocket, what a seven hold. I'm really happy with this trade because it was a level that we earmarked, not because it was a random dip trade that I wanted to take, I didn't want to chase it. No, it was based on sound technicals, the fact that we had key areas of resistance at seven, excuse me, earlier in the day, and then we cleared it with some vigor, came back, held seven, and up we go into seven and a half. Again, I wet my beak there at the seven and a third. But AAPL is the trade that I'm in at the moment. Oh, sorry, I have HYMC as well. This one's four pennies out of the money. It is hanging on to the volume weighted average price, but you know, for much how much longer? I already have my stop in place on HYMC, and the volume is also dropping off, which is concerning me a little bit here. Uh, 414 uh, is gonna be my line in the sand with this name, but I'm gonna have to see if Apple continues here or whether or not we've had the best move behind us on AAP on the day, 171.22 HOD. So we'll keep eyes on that. I already wet my beak there for a nice 10 penny winner. Oh wow, 13.20 Wolf, the IROC Z was hot when it came out. Oh, was it ever, dude? Oh my God, I remember my, I used to have a neighbor um, that had one of those and his dad bought it for him, but he would like weasel, he would just like, be on his case all the time. He's like, the car's not clean. You're not keeping it clean. And you know, I spent my whole life savings on this car for you. And he's like, dad, but I'm cleaning. He's like, it doesn't look new anymore. I don't care if you're cleaning it. And me and my dad would just watch this whole family drama uh, unfold from <laughs> our balcony. And this poor dude had to deal with his old man all the time. Anyway, um, <laughs> back into Apple. Yeah, I don't know where that story came from. But I like that. Who cares? <laughs> uh, back into Apple, waiting for that 171 and a quarter dollar break. Right now, uh, we are at 171.17. And has anybody looked at NVIDIA lately? Because it's knocking on the door of 900. 898.58 HOD on NVDA. And the future is on the way to 18.4. Who remembers the CPI print from yesterday? I don't, because we're right back at that level that we tanked off yesterday. The market has a short-term memory, 18.4 incoming, 18.396 HOD at the moment on the NQ futures. Wow, we have literally retraced the entire tanking from yesterday. Here's the 15-minute look, if you don't believe me. There we go. We tank, and then we move right back up, and I'm not going to credit PPI for this, obviously, because it would have pumped up in uh, the in the pre. Do <laughs> Katina is like, credit it, Your credit pressure. it. Love you. Uh, good times, good times over here. Uh, all right, so holding Apple, nothing really more to discuss on that trade, HYMC doing nothing. Uh, what else is uh, going on here? Let's see what the chat is up to. Zion Lala, I haven't heard from you in a while, my man. Shout out to big Zion over there. Uh, Sharif. Adara, where do you think NVIDIA is going today? I just kind of give you a little bit of a tidbit there. I think it's going to 900. Wow, Apple, 171.40 HOD right now on AAPL. So this one's continuing to go. Look, Zion, um, NVIDIA is at resistance level two on the pivots. Whatever you make of that, you could be a fan of pivots. You, you, know, you could dismiss them. But can you dismiss the 900 level? I mean, that is the $100 level. Right, so we're awfully close to that. Right now, we're actually rejecting exactly off pivot. So I'm not really trying to toot pivot's horn over here, but the fact of the matter is, it's rejecting off it. So we'll see exactly if it makes it into 900 or that 898.58 for whatever reason is going to be the HOD. But I've got my eyes on AAPL, baby. Nice trade here. Yeah, congrats to you there, Thank you. eating that apple, Tim Cook in there, Ooh. and I like the little beak wetter there. That's yeah, got a really yeah. nice look. Um, yes, yeah, so the people were joking. Oh, um, I, I think Adara should talk even faster. Yeah, I do. I do speak a little fast. That's just for um, disposition, though. Right, but the, that's the thing is, I think the market um, <laughs> requires some speed. You know, what hey, I, mean? it's a I fast like that. Market, you so it around trying to there. keep up with those markets, right? I but like yeah, I just that. thought that was pretty funny. People being like, "Oh, could you could speak even faster?" So I thought that I, I got a kick out of that. Um, we, I love this community. Great community over here in the chat. Yeah, so this NVDA cooking. I'm happy with it. I don't know what those eyebrows were, but as long as we stay, <laughs> I, I'm trying to add a little bit right above the 897. Um, 
we could actually be getting into this now. I think it's 897.11 was my area of interest. If we break decisively below this, I'm getting out. Basically, why I like this area is look at this little chop and turn we had around the range in NVIDIA before we just sort of added in before breaking up decisively here. The goal is to take these 898.40s. We'll have to see if we get them. We're holding this 897 really well as a base. Oh, wow. I do trade NVIDIA off the one minute just because for scalping purposes, I do find it a little bit easier, but I always cross reference with what we're doing on the wider time frame. Now the wider time frame, we do see a little bit of a, a, a top here at 898, which is why I would like to be out of the trade by then. We already have an order set. So we're ready to go as long as NVIDIA is ready. We're ready to go to the upside. All right. So we'll wait for her. We're going to be, you know, we're, pa we're we're trying to be more patient people. We just talked about patience there. But yeah, so this N to the V to the D to the A is um, right now going my way. I also want to talk about a trade I was really proud of, and that's this Coinbase long scalp. We took this bottom. I, I initially had an order, like I said, at 257 and then canceled it before the auction. Happy I did because that initial auction reaction would not have been kind to my Coinbase long. But then I said, Adara, I have my Binance up. We're holding up you know, pretty nicely around that 7,000. I said, you know what, Adara? Dip your, don't wet your beak, dip your toe in to these waters here at that 256. I was really proud of this too. We actually got this wick down to the downside. It was, it was gonna give us about a dollar, like 50 cents, really just watching, seeing what Coinbase does. Uh, not Coinbase, Bitcoin. Oh, uh, well also Coinbase, because I'm in Coinbase, but that's neither here nor there. Then I got out, I had a really small position, just got out kind of midpoint of this range, this 257 area. Please just punch, happy with the trade. Sometimes you just have to take small victories and, and be happy with it. That's what range trading is all about, baby. So um, I don't know why I said that, but yeah, please just punch. I'm gonna have to pay homage to one of the, the, the people that used to work uh, on the in in the firm or the show here, his name is Fei Fei, oh. and the reason I'm paying uh, um, I'm shouting him out is because one of his favorite stocks when he was here, he would always talk about Veru, V E R U. Really? Yeah. Do you guys remember this? Of course. The could, yeah, he's the CEO of Veru, and Veru is up 40 percent today, 41 percent. I don't know what it's doing, but shout out to Fei Fei, baby. Where is he at here? If you don't like the video right now, I love this. Channel, <laughs> I might dump on you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Fahad, man. Yeah, I still have that on my stream deck, Neil, believe it or not. But there is Veru, guys. Veru's making moves today. That I, was his favorite stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we so used random. to tell, tell him that the, he's the CEO of the, the company. And I don't see a, I don't see a, a reason why Veru is moving. I'm getting an, an uh, alert that it is moving on volume and on percentage, but... Uh, yeah, Veru, look. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, Neil, Neil, good point, Neil, good point. Neil wants me to pull up a daily chart, and, you know, we have to do that for all, all the small cap gappers. We got to do that because, you, you know, these guys are here for a good time, not a long time. And here's the weekly on Veru. So you can see an epic double top at 2450 for whatever reason. That is an epic double top, and there you go. We quadunk essentially off all-time highs there, and we break below $1 for quite some time. We were in 30 penny, 40 penny land, but today we are in above a dollar land. Um, Chilean nightmare for whatever reason. Not sure why we're moving again on, uh, on Veru, but uh, a tradable name here, and the volume is good. 7 million shares done, which is not great for $1 name, but the volume is coming in recently. Um, <laughs> there's a Bloomberg report that Fei Fei bought more shares. So well, he owns no, the company. Well, so he is the CEO, insider so. buying, right? Yeah. Like exactly. <laughs> so shout out to Sean for that. Allo, Queen. The Queen. What are yeah, you yeah, doing, yeah. girl? <laughs> she wants Fei Fei's number. She wants some of those shares that he's buying. I'm very. You can't right. be CEO. Someone's already doing that, Kathy. Adara, are you seeing this market? I am. What is happening? Apple is almost at 172. The future is well above 18.4. We're at 18.4 and a quarter right now. HOD 422 is unreal day today on the market. Uh, I mean, who can complain about this? Uh, this it's been good, good today, and I really don't have anything more to say. I'm happy. What, what's happening right now? Yeah, it's a great look. I will say, as a you know, as a range trader, I'm a little like. Ooh. 
there's a little less opportunities for me. But um, but yeah, shout out to, to Sharif killing it with those small caps. I thought it was cool too that you were because you were still able to get involved in um, that movement with the auction because you had the small caps because small caps kind of do what small caps oh, do. Oh, they don't care about the auction. That's what I thought yeah, was really yeah, cool. Yeah. Exactly, I was like, oh, yeah. go Sharif getting into a trade. But bless you. Bless you. Before the... Um, Mr. Protein over there is sneezing up a storm. It's Captain, Captain Protein. Protein. He just, uh, he gave himself a battlefield promotion, right? So... We have to respect Shout out to Ty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Captain Protein. <laughs> Corporal Protein. Say it again. Oh, I didn't actually know somebody had to die. I thought if you did well, you got a promotion. Okay. Well. Neil says you got to die for, to get a battle. Well, most often than not, you have to be deceased to get that uh, battlefield pro, battlefield promotion. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop, says Nick Free. You are not wrong, my man. Amazon is now at all-time highs. That is post-split all-time highs. Go have a look. Uh, wow, Amazon, obviously we saw Andy Jassy on Squawk Box this morning dropping hotlines, making the case for the fourth pillar for Amazon, the first three being obviously online retail, then they shifted focus to Prime, and then the, the biggest maker of money for them is AWS, their cloud. They want to have a fourth pillar in there, and it goes by AI. The market ate that up, and now we're up 1.8% at all-time highs of there on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon's a great look. Nick Freed, another super chat. Sorry, I just saw this one now too. Two euros saying, loving my Amazon call options. And shout out to you. Definitely, those are our options to love. That's for sure. So congrats to you. I think Andre as well in the chat. A couple other people getting long Amazon. So great look. And thank you very much for um, participating here in our lovely chat. Also, I did get long NVIDIA. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm still playing this range. I was just complaining about how the market wasn't giving you any ranges now, but I mean, NVIDIA is right here like Adara. What am I, chopped liver? Like, come on. So yeah, NVIDIA, I'm sorry, sorry I disrespected you, NVIDIA. You are <laughs> ranging very nicely. So credit where credit's due. Um, basically, this 897 to 898.50 area continuing to be um, pretty sweet. So we're going to keep playing that like a little fiddle. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, accidentally, we fat fingered out of it. That's okay. That's okay. I'm pretty happy with that. We still took some profit. Oh, no, we were basically flat on that. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, please just punch. Still to, to, you know, honor to be a part of this market and honor to be, be trading NVIDIA here. I don't know why I'm flattering NVIDIA. Like, it'll be nicer to me if I, if I talk <laughs> nicely about it. But that's okay. We did that finger out of that. If we come back to 897s, we'll get back in. The reason I didn't get back in right away is because I didn't like the point of entry on that. But it's all good. There we go. Um, Always, as Obi says, where's the next trade? And I'm sure Obi, the Amazonian him, himself, is, is probably pretty pleased with that Amazon movement. Also, um, Elon in the chat was saying um, Tesla is Godzilla, like I guess like Godzilla, um, but Tesla. So yeah, I mean, certainly <laughs> this one, it is green. It is a monster in the market here. So let's, I, I, I appreciate it, Godzilla, yeah. Um, oh my God. I will say, very happy I stopped short to get what I did. That seems like that was the, the time to kind of cut the cord so really proud of what I was able to do though with uh, with this short earlier today not perfect but just about you know we had some good opportunities I see you are also maybe new, the new CEO of yeah we're, we're gonna we're taking tiny shares in here just uh, to keep it interesting on VERU big dip trade um, big retracement off that 192 touch back into 182 let's see if this is um, a one or two minute retracement on this monster it goes by the ticker VERU and it trades on the Nasdaq and it's up 45 46 percent new high of day on AAPL 172 on the dot as Apple recovers bigly off that um, move down that it has been doing the, uh, the last few days on AI News, uh, that is despite getting a price target downgrade from uh, the big kahuna today, JP Morgan, cutting the price target by $5, but reiterating the, out, um, the overweight um, rating. There goes 172 on Apple, 172.06 now. We got the last little piece out there at the half dollar, which was obviously way too early, way too quick, as that 172 level come, comes off the, quite quickly since we, uh, we got out at that half dollar level, so let's keep eyes on that. Veru doing bub kiss at 182, and likewise with HYMC, so the two small cap gappers not really doing a whole lot today. Big Kahuna loses its meaning if you throw it around every day. Man, I can't, I can't catch a break around here, Neil. Man, give me a break, man. Yeah, well, look, look. 
Neil, is JP Morgan the big kahuna of banks? That's not the point he says. All right, well, I can only call him a Sean the big kahunas, I guess. But yeah, shout out to the big kahunas. They'll be on in 33 minutes. Top dog, chief. I, there's a whole bunch of synonyms we could use. The big kahuna should be received, uh, reserved, I mean, excuse me, for the big kahuna. That's true. Nick Free, five euro super chat. Thank you very much, Nick. Sorry, one more question. I'm long on a swing trade on BLK. What do you guys think about holding on into earnings? Okay, well, you know, earnings is a bit of a tough look because you never really know what you're going to get. Uh, from the earnings uh, report, obviously, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast there. But let's bring in the side chart and have a look at BLK. All right, I have to keep my eyes on Veru because I'm not being very good at the moment. All right, this is the we yeah, Veru good. I don't know how you got that. Bro, bro, she, she does it instantaneously. You know, it's her mind works like that. BLK, all right, let's look at this a little bit on the daily here. A uh, bit of a tougher look there. What is this company? BlackRock. What am I saying? Of course I know it's BlackRock. Hmm. $6, $600 general area support. We broke it a couple of times. Um, that takes us all the way back into March of last, wow, March of 2020, May of 2022. So that level has been coming in over and over. All right. Let's see. More locally, though, essentially since December, the low has been around that 775 780 for whatever reason on um, on BlackRock. So keeping an eye on that, let's see the high end of the range. Look, I, mean, I don't know, man. I don't know too much about this company. The technicals are a little bit, uh, yeah, you see it. There's no discernible trend, a uh, little zigzaggy. For initially we had 750, 760 as a top. Then we give up that as resistance and we use it as support. Look, this is not a bad look. I think you're, you're towards the lower end of the range. So if you're to look at this area over here, essentially, from their last earnings report, which we know for a fact was December 15th, okay? And you look at the range from December 15th to right now, we are at the lower end of the range, okay? And the range is about $70 with eight, 40, eight mid 40s being the high side and 770 being the low side. I like this area from a technical level, whether or not BlackRock ends up doing well on its earnings, an entirely different story. That's a fundamental question rather than a technical question. Um, I, hope you, uh, I hope you do well on that. Apple, high a day again, 172.19. It's trading at 10s right now. Apple now up 2.5%. Let's keep my eye on this Veru trade. We're about two pennies out of the money. What are you looking at, Adara? Uh, yeah, I'm in Google, but I have to say, I feel like this one might have been a little bit of a reach. I, I should have been Google searching the five-minute chart instead of the one-minute on this. I forgot I was on the one-minute. I was like, look at this little bull flag. We're consolidating so nicely. I sound like Mickey Mouse, but I was, like, very optimistic <laughs> about it. And then I go to the five-minute, and it's like, girl, girl. We have a bit of a topping tail candle here in the five-minute. This little doji yeah. being like, hey, no, no, no. So don't love that. Don't love it, but I am still going to be in the trade because um, my my stop area is going to be this 60s area. Look at how much support we've had at that 60s area. That gives me about 10 cent risk. I want minimum. My first out's going to be that 185, 158.85. So that that's like risk to reward. That's not bad at all. That's about that's that's nice. So I have no problem with that. I will stay in this trade for the time being. Um, yeah, very happy with this one right now. Wish I had more, but this market not super rangy. Odyssey Fights asking if I got it on Tesla. No, I was playing this. And someone was saying earlier, too, this is a good point. Tesla was never really a short. That's fair. I was I was also playing, like, these kind of ranges. You know what I mean? Like, that 172.70 was massive resistance earlier in the day, so I was kind of playing that, uh, you know, in and out. That was a good one. But, yeah, you're right. You guys are right. Like, I think Tesla definitely, the long was presenting itself early on. Tesla... Are we going to make new high of days? It looks like maybe we already did on this week over here, so maybe wrong. But, yeah, this I'm sure Elon is pleased as punch with his high. Oh, yeah, I bet he is. Today. You want to see what a buy program looks like? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's just uninterrupted. Uninterrupted. Obviously, big money looking to reposition into Apple. We kind of knew this day of reckoning was coming. A lot of people thought maybe WWDC Worldwide Developer Conference in June. That's when we dropped the AI news. I didn't think it was going to be that long. I was 
I didn't think it was going to be today, but I definitely thought maybe we'd get something on the earnings call towards the end of this month. I didn't think Tim Cook would want to wait and watch this stock suffer for another two, three months. That was just my opinion. Um, and I guess you're, you know, we're going to get these uh, headlines incrementally here for AI, at least it seems, because today was not a day that I had earmarked for any Apple news. So Apple on the way up, 172 and a quarter HOD at the moment here on AAPL. I want to figure out another way into this trade. We were long 171.11, and now it's a dollar uh, higher. And it did dip into 172 briefly, so I thought, okay, look for the clearing of the whole dollar and then coming back in and using the whole dollar to defend. I didn't take it because I was looking at something else at the moment, but yeah, Apple just, it's on the way up, guys. All right, I'm out of Veru now as it broke down. We lose about eight pennies on that. It broke down aggressively there. Um, this is a mistake by me. Uh, I want to explain why on Veru. Uh, I got a little nostalgic there. Uh, the truth of the matter is this is a topping tail candle, and that should have precipitated me to get the hell out of Dodge or at least to wait for a dip trade into a key area of support, like right here. So this area over here was key area of resistance, one, sorry, uh, one and two thirds. So I should have been waiting for something like that rather than punching in willy nilly at 182. Let's see if it holds up here because we did this exact same thing with another trade earlier on, on CADL. We let it clear and then we let it come back into that $7 level. Let's see if Veru does that at these levels here, coming down aggressively. Let's flip back to HYMC. All right, we'll break even on that, nothing going on there. All right, let's keep an eye on that. And there goes Veru, I guess, maybe at this 168. Let's see if it puts in a couple of green candles over here. Bhavan Patel, can you look at MGRM News on accepting into the NVIDIA Inception program? I've been getting a lot of these NVIDIA Inception advertisements on both Instagram and Facebook. I have no idea what the hell this is. I'm gonna have to Google it, but I keep seeing it show up. So I, I looked it up. Apparently, it? it's a program designed to help companies evolve faster through cutting edge, I'll stop doing air quotes, cutting edge technology and access to the latest technical resources from NVIDIA. Okay, so teaching them how to use AI? I think basically like okay. training companies mm. with AI. Okay. Um, Fair. Helping them evolve faster. So that's okay. what they say on the, the press release. All right. That, that's good. Good look there. Um, Apple, oh well, my God. 172.50. Okay, we're about 3%, Katina, man. We're very close to 3%. Um, I also want to point something out. We're, we're doing the wick shimmy dance right now on the future at uh, 18.4 and a quarter. So this could be the, the, the top here for the future. Is this a local top? Yeah, looks like it might be. Let's zoom out a little bit on the futures. It's not exactly a local top, but we're doing the wick shimmy dance, guys. Look at this. When we do these topping tail candles into a key level, so the future may be a short here. Um, wow, yeah, that's a bold call, especially with uh, the, the future move. But, like, this is what I typically see before the, the future tanks. When we do these wick candles into a level and then we start seeing the sellers pile in here. Let's see what happens with 18.4. But right now, the, the future may be, I don't know. Maybe at least locally. It's as good as we're going to get, maybe. All right. Let's keep on that. Yeah, take it, brother. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, did you notice Tesla was at day highs as well? I did, yes. Yeah. Superman in the chat here saying uh, RIP to those who short Tesla. And, yeah, I mean, that's why I got out of that range short because that's, that, that's an intense move uh, up here. I'm just pulling up Nike here, too. Fabian was mentioning Nike to me in my dude. ear. Yeah, I mean, this one, we had a positive catalyst on this today with that upgrade. Now we see this little doji candle right, in, uh, right below, I guess, this 90 MA. It'll be interesting to see what we do here on NKE. Right now, I don't really know if it's running to the upside or the downside. It's kind of jogging in place right now. Um, but we do have the Olympics for Nike as an interesting catalyst as well, up about 3.5%. Yeah, this is an interesting chart. Shout out to Fabian for reminding me that we did have this move up in Nike. Right now, though, the main thing on my mind is this move down in AMD. Please just punch. So I like this, um, and the reason I took it too, I, I like the five minute. I do think we have a little bit of weakness here. The profit target goal is everything out at 169.50s, but also I was looking at this for levels off of my one minute. I do like trading some of these larger caps for scalping purposes off the one minute because it lets you know a little bit more immediately what kind of movement we're having, what kind of pace we have. We're going to get out some of this early at 169.69. Um, 
Honestly, I know that sounds like kind of an odd number, but really just because I'm looking at where we're having a little chop and turn. So that is um, the level, but I'm going to interrupt this for a very adorable. No, no, it's not that oh, really? important. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so I like my AMD. Um, let's keep profit taken. Okay, do we have the rest of this prop? No, we don't. That's my Google. So we're going to get the rest of this ready to go here around um, 169.50. Don't know why I clapped there. It's a little bit anticipatory, but we are anticipating some nice things here. In hey. AMD, Google doing a heck of a lot of nothing, but I have no reason to leave, so I'm not leaving. Like I said, that break below 158.60, I'm Audi. Right now, we're basically flat in the position. Google, if you want to search for a new high, please do, and please do it soon and let me know. There we go. Getting impatient in Google, but not impatient about this. I want to shout out my girls, and not girls, girls, but my dog, dogs. Happy National Pet Day, everybody. Yesterday was Happy Siblings Day, International Siblings Day. Today is Happy International, well, National, sorry, Pet Day. This is my girl Betty over here. They're obviously French bull bulldogs. They're sisters. You know, there's a story behind this. I went to buy one only, right? I went to buy her. I know I did want to say no, but they wouldn't sell them. Uh, they wouldn't sell them to me without the the pair chili nightmare because they're like, no, they just spend way too much time together, and yeah, yeah, they're like best friends, and we don't want to split them up. So this one's Betty, that's Veronica, um, my favorite girls, man, and they're always uh, they're always uh, good times, good vibes too. And uh, did I tell you they sleep a lot? Yeah, I mean, honestly, same. So I'm jealous, you know? No, I'm joking. I love, but sleeping is great too. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, they're, uh, I don't think, um, I, I think they're just sleepy because they're lazy as hell. That breed is, let me tell you, that breed is one lazy and stubborn breed. <laughs> let me tell you about that. Um, all right, so happy National Pet Day, everybody. Make sure, uh, you know, you're treating your pets well and everything like that. Yeah. Um, Apple put in a bit of a, um, you know, the first red candle here coming in on the five minute chart, Adara, and let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight red candles in a row on the five minute chart for AAPL. We're putting in a bit of a top locally here at 177 and three quarters, coming back down now into that 170. I said 177, I meant 172, obviously. 172 and three quarters now coming back down into that 172 and a third. So AAPL having a bit of a trouble here, and that could be largely due to the fact that we're putting topping tail candles on the NQ June contract. We are topping out, it looks like for the moment, at 18.425. We're coming back down into 18.4. Let's keep an eye on that 100-point level to see if we make or break this level. You know how much I love the 100-point levels uh, on the future, so we're at it right now. Let's see exactly if we can break it or not, but it looks like this might be it for this big, big boy move up here, at least for the moment. Apple putting in a bit of a topping tail candle here on the five. Is this a short, man? Yeek, this is a mean reversion trade, which I'm not good at. Apple topping tail candle, 172 and three quarters, now at a quarter dollar, Adara. It's a good mean reversion look, though. It is. I'm just not a good mean reversion trader, I'll tell you that. That's, right? that's true, right? Because it's yeah. like sometimes like people will point stuff out in the chat, and I love the look of it, but I can't take it because it's not my type of trade. So I do get yeah. that, but I mean yeah. that. That's a so nice. I know you and, you and Apple, you, you were killing it with the Apple today, so hopefully good they can trade. cook good you trade. something up there. But, yeah, I'm really proud okay. of this AMD. Thank you to, to AV. I appreciate that compliment there. Yeah, I really I took this because I like that we came below that previous area of support, 170. Didn't have a perfect entry. Got in around 170, uh, 169.90s. Really proud, though, got out exactly around that previous area of resistance with the rest of the position. And now it looks like that resistance could be forming support. So this could be actually kind of spicy. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. I'm happy with the trade. Please, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, you'll shut up, bro. We were just talking about how bad Siri was. And Siri's like, <laughs> I'm here to help. And it's like, I wasn't really asking you, girl. But yeah, that was good times. Gotta love this market. Of course. Good time. So much happening over here. Also, Sebastian saying, I have an Audi. Did you practice with the stick shift? No, I can't drive at all. Because people were talking about the stick shifts the other day. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. No one wants me behind okay. the wheel of a car. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, the good time. Also, AMT following even further. Google's still within my area of interest. It's like, Google, make, make up your mind either way. Let me know if I should stay or should I go. Because we keep clashing, pun very intended, with this um, this kind of level, maybe I, the area of entry will, probably wasn't perfect, so we're going to have to wait and see. A couple pennies away from me having to definitively exit this trade, but then again, now we're back near my point of entry. So I'm just going to let Google do her thing, 21, because trying to figure out how this is moving is not a fun use of anybody's time. So fabulous times here.
Um, also, yeah, Kyle Burdett, funny pun there, an Audi and Audi. So I got a kick out of that. Big Kyle. Yeah, I know Big Kyle and I are talking right now about the future. And I'm like, well, maybe the top might be in Big Kyle because I mean, we all know how much uh, Big Kyle Burdett likes to trade, number one, the ES and the SPY, and most notably to the short side. And uh, we, we had that 18.425 wick shimmy dance. We tanked. We didn't tank. We retraced, excuse me, down into 18.394. And right up we go again. Is this a dead cap bounce? And are we going to just start trending down? <laughs> you guys didn't hear that. Oh, I did hear that. Though. I, well, I, the I, viewers didn't, didn't hear that, but <laughs> the Chilean nightmare made a... Uh, uh, all right, whatever. <laughs> Baby, you're killing it today, bro. Um, right back up we go here on the Fuge into the mid-teens again, looking to take that 18.425 touch that we had earlier. Uh, so maybe a bear trap here. And now in the same way that we put in this kind of inverse hammer candle on Apple, we're now putting a hammer candle an actual hammer candle on Apple, and we're moving right back into that HOD again, about 20 pennies off that. Apple's a monster. We're 10 pennies off now, the high of day on AAPL. It's not a good idea to short this. Well, at least may, not for now, anyway. Maybe tomorrow we get a nice decline on Apple because it's got a long way to make back what it gave up the last few months, guys. So let's be real. Apple's down at 10 to third percent on the year, and that's year to date. That's not off all-time highs. It's well off all-time highs, 200. So AAPL doing things here. Apple right back up again. Tesla right back up. The Fuge right back up. Even Softy, which was the, you know, the bit of a dead one today. It's right back up at highs as well. The real dead one today, though, uh, Adara, and this has not been called the dead one. I don't think it, in quite some time or ever. M-E-T-A. Wow, doing you're right. nothing. Doing absolutely nothing up 0.12. Not responding to this market move at all. Yeah, Meta's having a little snooze there. Meta's napping. Yeah, Pillsbury, I should have paid more attention to this. Pillsbury, I believe, early in the chat saying there were some nice little Meta range shorts. And it's actually coming back into this level now. Oh, I got excited. You can tell I got excited because I sit up aggressively. <laughs> and Meta, if you want to reject this 521 uh, area again, I'm going to say hello. I might, I might slide into your DMs, Meta. Hola. You, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. But yeah, let's see. But I don't like this this 90 MA and VWAP bounce. Hola. Oh, like and subscribe today. Shout out to Cat. Shout out to Cat. But yeah, let's see how this goes here with META. I like the short, but I don't like that VWAP and 90 MA bounce. I would like it to reject here. I'm not getting involved until I see a, a clear rejection here. So let's see how this goes. Um, really happy though with this Google. I am really happy I stayed in as well. Like this is not, it's not like this is a crazy profitable trade or anything, but I think one part, and we talked about this in the lesson, being patient and sticking to your plan and trying to find gratitude and be grateful for everything you're having in the trade. I'm grateful that I took this opportunity and I'm happy that, you know, I stayed in it because initially I was kind of getting bored. I was like, oh, we'll wait for this to see what we do at 158.60. We kept bouncing, so I stayed in and I was kind of like, make up your mind, Google. And then Google curled back up, so I was pleased as punch. We're going to see what we do here. We're getting near high of day, so I should probably get everything out here just because my type of trade is not going to be high of day break. Um, so we're going to, yeah, we're going to get out here at 85s if we break above 85s. There we go. Please just punch. So happy I'm out of this trade. Bears versus Bulls sake. I can't even believe we only have 15 minutes left to go, but yeah, Bears versus Bulls just letting us know here. 15 minutes left in how to trade. And I think, I can't speak for everybody, but I think hopefully we've had a really fun time here. There's been quite the market to get involved in. What, what a time to be alive here. Um, I'm watching this NVIDIA too, because NVIDIA has been an interesting one. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I had I had some fun uh, longs here, even with this fat finger. <laughs> early out here on this one. Still a lot, of, a lot of fun on this trade. If we keep rejecting this 898, because that was an area I was looking at for ranges earlier. If we keep rejecting 898, I might take this short. And I would probably just take it short, take part of 897, save a piece through the dream into this 896.50 area. But I want to wait for a little bit more confluence. Also, because I know I trade NVIDIA off the, the one minute, but I like to do charting off the five. Okay, yeah, so so the five, honestly, kind of the same looks to me as the one. I am seeing slightly lower highs. To me, NVIDIA is still a rangy look. Adara, you see something you like? You should probably get in. So I am going to get in with that. We're going to get involved here on NVDA. Envi involved. Yeah, I was trying to think of doing NVIDIA and involved pun, but I couldn't come up with it. But we are going to be getting involved. There we are. We're in NVIDIA. If we break above this eight, um, 
Pam? Look at this, like a dollar. Yeah, I, I want. Oh, you want it to dance? Yeah, I do want it. My bad. My I bad. appreciate that. Yeah, right. I knew it was. But I, like... I like I like your move here because look, remember we were yeah. making fun of the pivots earlier on, and we're like, oh, maybe you were, you like pivots, maybe you don't. Well, look how many touches here we have off the pivot on the five, and the blue dotted line on my chart right here is a resistance level two on pivots. One, two, three, four, five, six, and if this one closes the way it is, it'll be seven different five minute candle rejections off the pivot, resistance level two, which is essentially 899. It's 898.86 or thereabouts, right? You can't really tell with a $900 stock exactly what the penny level is, but. Oh, pivot, the Fed pivot. Go, go, close the door. I love that animation. <laughs> Where, where, um, Fabian, can you text when you have a second the, uh, the code to that on the stream deck? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, all right. So that NVIDIA level, I think that that's a hell of a, an entry there for you, Adara, because that's a rinse and repeat level right there. How many times are we going to come into that 898 and change level and reject on NVDA? All right. We got a 173 touch on Apple, 172.92. Uh, HOD, it's up now over about 3%, 2.93% here on AAPL. Uh, so good luck. Uh, Apple, uh, sorry, um, Tesla rejecting near that 175 area. It's right, it's above uh, the IB high. I gotta tell you, so Tesla kind of no man's land here, trying to gauge this level on Tesla, but we do have this 175 area from Tuesday that we used as a key area of support. We kept bouncing into 174.50, 175, and we, we bounced off that level. So possibly this specific area here could be a level of resistance on uh, TSLA. Let's go back and have a look at the future as well to see what's popping off. Well, we're right back above 18.4. We printed a new high of day on the NQ prior to the 18.438. It was 18425 and we printed another 13 points on top of that. But you know what we haven't been talking about and what has had one hell of a day as well is goggles. G-O-O-G-L into 159 here on Google. It has been up and to the right the majority of the morning. There was a little bit of a retracement here when we started coming down at around 945, held the 50 period quite well and that 156.50 level and we haven't looked back since. Google on the way up to 159, it's respected either the 10 or the 20. The, the micro retracements have all bounced off the 10. The larger retracements have made it down into the 20 on this new uptrend. Google having itself one hell of a day as well, not to be outdone by the not dead one today, Apple, as it's now over 3%. I haven't seen Apple over 3% in some time. I'll just tell you that. So uh, very happy as a shareholder. And it's my biggest holding by far, by far. Like if Tesla, I think I have like 30 shares of Tesla now. Okay. Yeah, no, Apple is like exponentially more. Nice. So I'm yeah. hoping for the good good. Got a nice piece of apple pie there, yeah? Yeah, it would be nice. I generally throw you an apple pie every, uh, when the dividend comes in. Oh, quarterly no. to throw an apple pie. With That's actually money. so apt too, to get like <laughs> dividend presents and have them be literal apple pie or apple crisp. That's really funny. <laughs> Yeah, we, Kevin Mendoza, close the door. Yeah, close the door, right? No, he didn't say it like that. He we said it a, a different way, yeah. yeah. He was there with his wife yesterday at, um, at the, uh, whatever this gala was at the White House. And uh, yeah, he was, I didn't think that he would rub shoulders with the CEOs. I figured, you know, he had to disassociate. Yeah, he's pretty coy too, so I was yeah. pretty, that's a little, that's a little Boy, special. okay, I like that. Yeah, he usually keeps his cards a little closer to the vest. The vest was a little open today. Yeah, and like imagine him at a party. You can't drink too much. Well, you can't drink too much in your position as Fed chair anyway, because you can't be loose in the lips. But imagine around the CEOs too. You oh, can't yeah. be loose in the lips. Especially oh. bank CEOs, because didn't you say exactly. Mr. Jeremy Diamond, Jamie Diamond was there? <laughs> he was. Jeremy wow. and his wife were both there, right? So you wouldn't necessarily want to be loose lipped around no. a bank CEO, especially. It was a black tie event, uh, Chile Nightmare. Chile, he was telling me it was a black tie. Let, let's put, do we have a video of that? You can keep doing your thing here, Adair. Yeah, I'm going to pull no up a video of that. Yeah, so my, do, my thing 21 right now, because um, I'm doing my thing 21, uh, is trying to get a little bit added to this NVIDIA short. I'm so cool with the short. I don't have a reason to leave the short right now. There is a point that someone pointed out in the chat, and I do agree with it. It does make me a bit nervous. I am shorting um, this top of the range in an uptrend, which is not normally something I do. 
However, this NVIDIA rejection has been kind of so repetitive and so swift that I do feel a little bit more emboldened to do it than I would in any other stock. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. We're also going to switch some of the profit takers up a little bit. I call it scalpulating, which is kind of when um, stocks give you reasons to kind of get out earlier, piece out earlier, piece out in different places. Right now, we're trying to pop back up in NVIDIA. So, you know, NVIDIA, if you want to come back down, please just punch. But yeah, we're going to have to see here, 897.50 um, is going to be where we get part of this position out. And then the bulk of the position, saving pieces for dreams here at um, 897.01. We'll do that. Why not? And then I'm going to save, a, we'll do, let's do 05s. We're going to be a little less confident. 05s, 06s. And then we're going to save a tiny piece for the dream if there's anything below 897 that we like. So that's the look on that. But even look, we only really, this is the one minute, I'll switch to a different chart. But I, I like, like I said, I like to scalp video off the one minute. We're still seeing this, this top of this range hold pretty well. And it, I do like that it's also in confluence with pivots. Um, so there we go. Shout out to Confluence and shout out to Pivots. Just shouting everybody out today. Can't believe there's only seven minutes left here. Yeah, so let's uh, take a, an opportunity to play the video gala from yesterday. There is Bezos with, uh, is she his wife or still his girlfriend? I don't even know at this point. Engaged. Engaged, possibly. I love her dress, though. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, Jeremy with his wife. No, it's Jamie. I know it's Jamie, guys. They're, they're coming in yesterday. There's Papa coming in hot. He's a tall dude, She's eh? so sweet. Look yeah, she is. Wave. She's like, hello. Uh, there's Papa coming in and there. Whoa, Robert. Okay, Ooh. Robert. I see you. I see you, Robert. I don't even know why he's there. Why? He's not a business leader. And then who's this? There's Rahm Emanuel, I think. That's Rahm Emanuel. Uh, I forget who this guy is. Now, these are, these are politicians. These guys I don't really care about. Ah, there's Tim Cookin. No, Tim Cookin. There's Tim Cookin, baby. He's there. He was cooking. There's Bill. Oh, go oh, Bill. Nice. Go Bill. <laughs> The Katina man is booing up a storm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that out loud. I'll tell you that. All right, wetting my beak here on. <laughs> yeah, the, the heavies, exactly, Charlie Taff. A lot of heavyweights yesterday at the White House. Obviously, we, knew that the, we know that the Japanese prime minister was there. There was a lot of talk about Nippon's deal. What's up, Katina man? AMD dollar in the money off that 170.50. We're down into 169.50 at the moment. Shout out to the Katina Man of Print Factory there on that AMD short. HOD on AMD, 170.50 Adair. Yeah, H oh, AMD was, yeah, I had, that, I had that short earlier too. I know Sean was involved in that one. Yeah, I took, I scalped it short. So I was, yeah, that was a nice little fun trade. Um, right now though, NVIDIA coming in, NVIDIA, to where I want it, um, which is gonna be, we took out half the profits right now, we're saving pieces for dreams, 897. Um, yeah, I split this trade kind of weirdly, so I had it in fifths. I took out two fifths at 897.50, took, gonna take out two more fifths if we get to 897. Then the last fifth is pieces for dreams, and that will be somewhere below 897. It's a really small piece. Um, she was telling me there's like a method where you can kind of um, take out smaller. I've noticed if you have like a smaller piece left, you could just take it out when you've taken everything else out. So I have a really a scintilla of shares <laughs> that I'm gonna use yeah. once everything else is out. Because that was a good, that was exactly. a Exactly, yeah, yeah. So then I can have the most of my trade ready, and then I have a tiny piece for a dream that's not going to blow up my account. Exactly. But also, if I want more profits, I will try. Yeah, shout out to Patrick Langlois. Yeah, honestly, shout out to you. Yeah, I wasn't. I, yeah, I am. I, I'm like really pleasantly surprised I was positive in video because we didn't start that way at all. But yeah, the spy. I'm not positive on the day though. Honestly, the spy short did knock me out a little bit. That shout out to Kyle Burdett who is very Big apt at that type of trade. I I, I tried it because I did like the levels we were seeing and I had a couple wins on that, but it didn't work out for me. I am still in the sim. When I have time, I will be taking the test. And I really do. It's just a matter of like, you know, having time. And then I have a lot of other stuff I do here, right, as well. Because my pri my priority is not trading. I do, you know, behind the scenes stuff and, I, yeah. I you know, on the desk. So if I have opportunity, I will take it. Right now, though, I'd like to take these opportunities every day to trade with everybody. And please just punch with NVIDIA. Um, also, yeah, the, I forgot I had the Google on earlier. That was nice. We didn't take the high of daybreak, but we kind of took it up into high of daybreak. Google right now searching for 159s. So I'm sure, um, yeah, I'm sure that Sunder Pichai and his crew are, are pretty happy over there as well. It's a nice look. <laughs> Control F. Um, reliable right. Rudy. How, how, uh, how we doing, brother? Long time no see. WBD long, question mark. Swing whichever you prefer. For, prefer. Thoughts. What's up, Reliable? Shout out to you, my man. Uh, we miss you around here. 
uh, obviously reliable, one of, uh, one, one of the individuals I associate with Enphase. Uh, so let's have a look at WBD for Reliable Rudy, baby. Warner Brothers Discovery, it's been a tough time for them. It's been a tough time for literally any streamer uh, aside from a handful um, because it just costs a lot of money to do. And well, you see the chart there reflects uh, the difficulty of doing it. So WBD, let's have a look here. So obviously not a good look with respect to technicals on the daily. It's been a rinse and repeat uh, short off the 200 EMA. Every single pop from January 2023 onward into the 200 per period moving average has faded. So that's something to look for there if you're swing trading. So that's number one. Look at that. There is the first. You get another couple over here. You get one over here. So you guys get the, the drift of this. All right, now let's do a little bit more of... Um, Going to the four hour here. Okay, so now we're basing out. Looks like there is a bit of a consolidation base here at eight and a quarter, eight and a third. That takes us all the way back into late February when we basically dropped to that level off earnings. You can see that earnings ca uh, candle there, um, that big dip and rejection off 10 all the way down into eight and a quarter. And you can tell the volume there, that was definitely earnings. Since that time though, even though we've been holding that base of eight and a third, eight and a quarter, it has been successively lower highs after that. So I gotta tell you, uh, Reliable, it is a bit of a tougher look here for Warner Brothers Discovery. I know Zazie, uh, Zazie's been doing work, he's been doing well, Zaslov, I'm talking about David Zaslov, he's been trying. Uh, ever since they picked up this company, Discovery, took Warner Brothers from AT&T about two years ago, uh, after AT&T wanted to get the hell out of media because they were just, you know, they were doing things with it. Anyway, V-shaped recovery today for Warner Brothers Discovery, but I, I suspect reliable that this is not what you want to do. You don't want to trade this intraday. I think you're looking for a swing. Nice uh, double bottom there at eight and a quarter. We already talked about eight and a quarter being that area of support. I hope you do well on it if you're already involved in it, reliable, because it is, uh, it's, it's a tough look for the company and we'll see exactly what they're able to do the end of the year, one minute left. Yeah, I can't believe only one minute left. This is a really fun day. Also, I'm just laughing at people in the chat saying I should get a Red Bull or coffee sponsorship. I mean, I'd be down. <laughs> Starbucks, Red Bull, hit me up. Bring it over. If no, you just... get a Starbucks, uh, like if they actually I would love that. sponsor you, uh, throw some of the oh, love of over course. here. Too, I mean, bro. I drink matcha, so I'm like, you know, I that's the thing they have, so I'm down for that. I'm just trying to check, see how many seconds we have left here oh 10 seconds we will see you guys tomorrow though we're doing more ranges so i yeah. i mean this has been a really fun week for me and i Bet. think the market's given us so many fun times today so we'll see you again tomorrow for the last day of the week same bad time same bad channel right now though we have brendan he's over at the big desk hey guys Hey guys, yeah, welcome back in. Two o'clock on a uh, now positive, nicely positive Thursday afternoon here. What a bounce back for the overall market. I was just reading uh, CBOE volatility index, eight week high. Highest it's been in, 